what's happening what's happening what's happening everybody we are live back live and inside the lab on this gorgeous gorgeous saturday afternoon we have a few uh we have a few friends in the chat i just want to pop in and say hello to qvwu dr elo um tiger nation 87 i don't think we've I don't think we've met on the uh, on the live before. He says, "How are you? I'm I'm doing good. G Hello and good afternoon to everybody here on the chat. If you're here with us live today, this is our weekly um, YouTube live stream here on Inside the Lab channel. And if you're watching on the replay, shout out to you as well. I do enjoy my replay viewers. Um, yeah. So in today's live stream, just want to first let me do a little bit of a uh, little bit of housekeeping." Uh, the channel is still growing. We're still pushing on our way to like 2,100 subscribers. Um, we get new new members here in this community daily. It's amazing. I think I'm finally feeling the um, the snowball effect. So that's pretty amazing. Also, if you haven't yet seen some of the merch I've been sharing on some of the socials, which if you're not following me any, I, I strongly recommend you give me a follow on Twitter. Okay, at shameless plug, right? At inside the lab YT, if you haven't yet, you know, give me a follow over there sometime after this live stream. But if you haven't seen some of the merch I've been sharing on my socials, you can check out the description box below. We have merch over at the official inside the lab merch shop, which what I call is in beta because I'm very much still adding new designs and just new new types of uh, new types of clothing and other things you know soft lines and other hard line items like you know mugs like we got the inside the lab mug right here let's see All right if you you might have seen the one of our i believe it was two two live streams ago I'm not sure but a, a few live streams back we um we unboxed this and opened it up and this is one of the one of the inside the lab you lift me up mug editions it's one of my favorites but yeah so you can jump down and jump down in the description box you know, if you really want to support, help support the channel off the platform, we got merch, all different types of apparel for men and women, you know, just to represent the community and also this beautiful hobby we all enjoy. That is PC gaming, right? Also, um, hold on, I'm sorry, Q, we got a comment here in the uh, here in the chat box from QVWU. He says, hope you don't say wait because I started my mini ITX build. Um it, well, I don't want to spoil too much, but you know, I this life, this is some, this is a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a while. But future spoiler, spoiler, no, you shouldn't. But it's still hang around because we're gonna we're gonna talk about why you should and the pros and cons to doing it now, not waiting, or well, the pros to not waiting and also the cons to not waiting. But um, we have a uh, another comment here in the chat from Jaywan Moore. Yeah, he says, what's up, bro? Hope all is well. Going to see you out here in the tech world. I'm going to school for it and think about building my own computer. I'll be following for sure for tips. Congrats again. Yeah, man, I, I definitely appreciate it, Jaywan. I'm curious, is, is that the same Jaywan I went to I went to high school with? Let me know in the chat. But, um, yeah, awesome. Definitely connect here with me on social media and right here on the channel and other, you know, other areas, especially if you want to dabble in like content creation jay um i love to you know talk to you i also have a a collab that's in in the making with dr elo he's here in the chat with this is a fellow a fellow a people of video society member of mine which dr elo i have been I, noticeably absent from our meetings but between you know virtual and with my children and just content creation and just life in general you know i've had to uh I've had to al allocate my time delicately, but I do plan on making the uh, making the next one. Jay says, "Yeah, man, congrats on the Lakers as well." Yeah, that's what, that's that's one of my cut buddies from high school. Jay, yeah, man, it's good to see you, bro. What's happening? Um, yeah, the Lakers won, but I I'm not the biggest LeBron James fan. I said it, but you know, con congrats to to the city of Los Angeles, you know, and 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 Kobe's name it was it's an awesome it's an awesome accomplishment but um yeah 
I we're going to talk about we're going to talk about you know should you wait or should you go ahead and build a high-end gaming PC now? Some of the pros, the cons to building one. Some of the most recent developments and the uh, you know just from AMD since their launch, which we covered, we talked about that on a live stream and on a few of the a few of the vlogs we did or I started doing here on the channel for Vlogtober, if you will. Which is funny, I planned on doing these vlog style videos before I understood the concept of even Vlogtober. So I guess it just rose, rolls well off the tongue. But, um, you know, we covered this topic in those videos, but, we you know, we didn't know about pricing, and that was before a lot of other details now are slowly starting to, uh, slowly starting to, like, just trickle out from AMD and some of their motherboard manufacturers. But, see, we got a few new people who joined in on the chat. So I'm going to say welcome, right? I normally like to uh, send everybody off with where I'm watching from. For most of you don't know, which I know I have a few... Uh, friends of mine in the in the chat, and I see oh Scott Scott, <laughs> what's up Scott? Skitty finally finally made it on one of the live streams. Another another former William Penn alumni in the chat, right? Scott, you got Jay. Jay is also Jay's also in the chat. Um, but yeah, another 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 William Penn, another William Penn alumni he says buck up Bart. <laughs> I'm not sure what Scott means, but tell me, tell us where you, tell me where you're watching, you know, where you at, where you located. I'm out here in, um, in east, uh, eastern, eastern, east coast, if you will, the east coast of the United States of America here in Maryland. It's a beautiful Saturday. It's bright. Tell me where you're watching from. What's the weather like out there? And how's your Saturday? It's been a very interesting week for myself before we jump into the topic and i see we got more we got more friends coming in to join us once again we're talking today's topical theme is should you build a gaming pc now right or should you just wait for new hardware that's going to be today's live stream theme right as more as more people come in and join the chat just want to give you a reminder just be 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 sure to give this video a thumbs up uh, I hate to sound cliche or, you know, like the typical YouTuber, but it, it really does help, right? The engagement really does help. So, you know, be sure to just jump down right into this video. It's, if the video switches the like button, might be somewhere down there. But, but yeah, we're talking, you know, should you build a game PC now or should you wait? It's something that has come up more often than not in a lot of, you know, a lot of the discussion forums and, and comment section threads that a lot of people are hesitant to want to build right now but like Q like Q like Q said he just started there they just started their mini ITX build and that's awesome because here coming up here soon we're going to do a series inside of a mini ITX case uh, Lee and Lee I want to say it's the dynamic spec I always I always get the name confused but it is a mini ITX build and I, I talked about this in the vlog, and I myself will likely go on the X570 platform or the X570 chipset for a dedicated gaming rig. Not so much for a system that I want to, say, uh, edit on and game on because of the resolution I play at, for those of you who don't know. Because I see we have a, uh, a, few, a few people who haven't joined us before in the live streams, but I game at a higher resolution and at a higher resolution you're GPU bound right you're the the monitor is depending on the the graphics card you know the more more resolutions the more resolutions being rendered so I don't necessarily need a beefy CPU for gaming I really need one that's going to be able to you know encode my videos and help with timeline scrubbing and the video software and the program I use which I use Adobe Premiere I use the whole Adobe Suite and if you're a creator out there in the chat or if you've been considering creating content here on YouTube or you want to stream on Twitch whatever the case may be I highly recommend you pay the uh, the monthly subscription for Adobe Premiere and there there are no sponsors of the channel yet right <laughs> if Adobe if Adobe did come I I would definitely do a video endorsing their program because once you can get over the learning curve because there's so much you can do between in, inside of the entire Adobe Premiere suite once you get over the learning cu curve, you unlock you, you unlock new potential for your content, right? You unlock new um, new skills 
that can help improve either your video production or your graphic design and graphic manipulation. Q says they're over in Turkey Instaball. That's right. I remember we got a we got a friend over overseas. That's what's up. Tell us uh, what time what time is it over there right now, Q, over there in Turkey? Um, like is it nighttime, daytime? And then Tiger Nation says Tiger Nation says good old Long Island, and it's really nice out here, but it's nothing compared to home. Good old good old Long Island. Okay, in New York. I believe I have some family up that way. Both myself and my spouse, we both have family up that way. And the Mr. Zombified, it's good to see you. Again, we got another regular in the house, Mr. Zombified. It says Central Oregon here. That's dope out there, okay, in the Flatlands. Nice, nice. Q says, I only I only bought a Cooler Master H100 and a 1650, and they say they're nighttime. Um, only bought a 16, uh, H100, <clears throat> excuse me, in a 1650. That's a great combination, depending on what you plan on pairing with that 1650. And it's nighttime there. That's interesting. It's it's like full daytime here. Skitty says, watching from north for Sally's at my job in Wally World. <laughs> He's uh, it's a little bit of sarcasm on there. All right. Well, that sucks your work, dude. Um, I meant to I meant to you know rat with you before earlier today. See what you was up to. But uh, yeah. So you know, let's start off with the let's 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 start off with Zen threes pricing right and i want to jump over to our training scene and no not that one our image scene it's i want to i wanted, I wanted to start with the pricing because if you look at what amd has done from say zen 2 to zen 3 which is the 5000 the 5000 series which you see here on the screen <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that, guys. The 5600X, the 5800X, and the 5900X. So right now, and we looked at this at you know during li last week's live stream, but right now, you can get say a 3600, which is a slightly you know the, the X the X variant are just slightly better bins, so you get higher, you know you get higher overclocks and higher single core overclocks. But you know the the 3600 right now can be had for you know about $179 same thing with the 3800x one step down from the 5800x the 3800x used I've been seeing them at a really good deal like I missed out on a used 3800x for $225 on the Facebook marketplace and the seller was local that's I normally don't come across deals like that fam when when I'm searching for um you know browsing them on the hunt for used parts i normally don't come across deals like that i just don't and i let it go by me but you can save about a hundred dollars give or take even a little bit more depending on you know what cpu or how many cores your workflow or your gaming flow may need and i say gaming because it seems like six cores are becoming you know more and more dependent for games especially open world games and games that are cpu intensive but you can save on some cases 100 to 150 dollars by just say going with a 3800x and that's why i say is it you know should you wait we're going to talk about it more but starting with just the starting with just the core the cpu there are other options right these you know zen 3 while that 19 percent IPC instructions per cycle or instructions per clock that 19% uplift is significant in gaming AMD slides showed us somewhere along the lines that you know across the spectrum 26% on average improvement from previous generation like across the spectrum that is that's amazing even in they've they've managed to even squeeze out more performance in the uh, in the area of content creation but these new CPUs don't make these other options obsolete or irrelevant. You can actually, depending on the direction you want to go. So if you're, and we're, and we're going to talk about, I don't want to spoil too much about it, but we're going to talk about it a little further on down in the live stream. But depending on your play style, depending on the type of games you play, that will determine more than likely the type of monitor you're going to want to pair with your system 
and we're going to talk about that in the live stream because like the title of, of this live stream indicates right it's should you build a high-end gaming pc now or should you wait because i did a, a poll on the community tab over on my on my channel and if you're not familiar with the community tab it's a section on youtube where i can share images and gifts and generally other videos from other creators or videos from my own catalog and you can also run polls on there it's one of my favorite things to do here on youtube because it gives me this sense of like real time interactions not in front of the camera or here live with the audience and i could just get feedback and we did a poll saying you know i want i said um what's you know what cp are you currently using and your main system i'm trying to see something right and lo and behold not much to my surprise some it was 70 30 split between i think 18 or 19 voters that most of most of you guys and girls are using amd cpus so coming up here i want to not only you know do content related on 5000 series zen 3 but also on zen 2 and even zen plus because while no AMD isn't manufacturing, say, new 2000 series CPUs, they're at the end of their life cycle pretty much. But you can find some good value on the used market from sellers who are, you know, wanting to just offload that, you know, they've exhausted that price to performance and they're willing and they're ready to upgrade to something else. John Pluto, hey, what's up, fam? I don't know if we've ever interacted on a live stream, but welcome. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us on a Saturday. John Pluto says they have an AMD CPU. That's what's up. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of AMD love AMD and Dr. Lisa Sue, their CEO. She's done amazing things for that company. And I am for one, you know, I am no fanboy of either Team Red or Team Blue. Right? I more so look at it like this. I I am a fan of my wallet, so. I try to recommend, you know, between picking between the two, you know, manufacturers of what's good for your wallet, what's good for your budget that's specific to you. Walter G, how you doing? I don't think we've also met on a live stream. Welcome. And Walter says, I would focus on a new high-end gaming build, not using existing products, since most will be selling gear to buy the new GPUs and CPUs. Yeah, and that's something, you know, that's something we talked about. I believe on last week's live stream where I had talked about the state of the used market and before Zen 3 was launched, you know, how how that might affect the used market because there will be gamers looking to upgrade to Zen 3, especially if they bought an X570 motherboard with a 3000 series CPU and they have the funds to stay uh, upgrade to you know, a, a $549 CPU like the 5800X, or 449, I'm sorry, like the 5800X, or the 5900X, the 12 core 24 thread CPU, which ironically, that's what AMD was showing mostly in their benchmarks. But if you don't need the 12 cores, so it's, uh, some benefits to having that many cores for starters would be if you're if you're interested in streaming right or doing cpu intensive rendering say for example you're a game developer right you made those those extra cores could uh could help you but gaming still very much relies on single thread performance and that's one of the areas amd was toting the most you know that their the biggest yields they got in their keynote was that single thread performance that they're surpassing intel which should intel be worried i i think so but they have the the capital to keep up with AMD. Like they're not concerned with falling behind or um, like losing too much market share. A Intel has the the capital and the R and D funds to um, to try to get their 10 nanometer node out. I had read an interesting article um, a couple of days ago that pointed out be why Intel might be stalling their 10 nanometer node is because they refined 14 nanometer so much. Um, that the yields they would get in 10 nanometer just aren't there. It'd be like a step back. 
Q says the used market in USA is so cheap in developing countries prices make no sense and yeah and I feel for my friends and fam overseas because that's something that's normally shared in the comment section here on the channel normally when I talk about the used prices a lot of the members and audience point out that well used prices in the USA you guys have really good prices and I'm like I know it really sucks that things like customs and just politics and government get in the way of everybody being able to enjoy the tabby at the prices that are affordable to you all right tiger nation with the question says what is your preference and what do you think the best budget cooler for people will be that's a good question my preference i am a water i'm a water type cooler person aios not clc not yet like i do want to do a custom loop when um you know, when I upgrade and get more space. But my my preference, which is a good question, Tiger Nation, 87. But my preference is water, and that's because I like to overclock. I like to overclock my CPUs. And, you know, because water transfers air more efficient than, than uh, say, a fan, say, a, a air cooler, that, uh, you usually can get higher overclocks with lower voltage. So lower voltage means less heat which means your CPU can then sustain those overclocks. But air coolers, especially for non-overclockers, are the best route to go, especially if you can. I mean, the, the aftermarket Ryzen coolers that came, the Ray Stealth and the Prism and the Prism Max, they were adequate, but you could go with an aftermarket air cooler somewhere between, like with the Hyper, with the, with the Hyper Evo 212 or a Noctua air cooler and get even lower... Um, you know lower temperatures and you could still overclock on those CPUs and the the Ryzen 5 one of the Ryzen 5 1600 X's I have here in the lab can do for four gigahertz on its air cooler with no problem so it's just usually with you know water you get better you know better life out of your CPU um, and you know just an overall better temperatures less noise too with an AIO fully involved media group hey what's up andrew it's uh it's good to see you it's good to see you he says never thought of it that way um yeah and this is why even some people they go with a uh a, on a loop on a custom loop because at that point you have more water in the system to transfer heat and you can determine the radiator size because radiator size also can have a uh, have an effect on temperatures which normally you have like 100 you have 120 millimeter radiators 140 280 240 and 360s and above when you're going with a custom loop i believe 480 something to that extent but um and then but once you once you look at the benefits of going with water when you're overclocking they far outweigh the the negatives but you do have to be concerned about you know leaks and things like that but i would knock on some wood i've I've never had that problem and i use nothing but aios with the exception of the 1600x that's downstairs on the test bit but yeah andrew it's good to see you i was telling dr elo earlier in the live stream i've been noticeably asking for my pov meetings but i uh i've been trying to juggle you know virtual learning with my with my younger with my younger kids and you know getting that all getting that all worked out but I do miss fellowshipping with my fellow creators. Hands down. Walter G says, I want to explore a custom loop for FX 9590. That's interesting. I'd wonder, I wonder why that is Walter G. I mean, you could definitely get, especially if you want to run like lower voltages, but I'm not sure, Walter, if you've seen, there's a video here on my channel where I tested the FX 9590 for a local friend of mine here. He couldn't get it to boot, but we got it working, as you can see in the video, and we tested it, and that video is actually doing pretty well for us here on the channel. I highly recommend you give it a watch. If you're here on the replay, I'll try to remember to throw a link up to the card here, and for my friends here on the live stream, you can find it down in the description box after the live stream is over. Stick around, but check that video out, because I cooled it with a, although it was, it was the, the cooling solution was kind of redundant, because I was using a open air configuration. So it, there was no case, but I did use an AIO and like a push pull configuration, but I wanted to m transfer as much heat as possible off of the radiator fins so that I could overclock the 9590 
so I could overclock the 9590 that I was testing with at the time. And I was able to get, you know, five gigahertz on all eight, you know, all eight cores because, excuse me, I'm not going to get it. It's, uh, it's, it's a little, it's a touchy, sensitive topic, but, you know, whether you want to, whatever way you want to go with it, the nine, the FX series are, don't necessarily have hyper threading. So they are eight cores, but I was able to get five, a five gigahertz, stable five gigahertz overclock on that 9590 on just a 240 millimeter AIO and push pull configuration. So just something to consider. Um, I'm not sure what your, oh, he said, okay, so you saw it. Yeah. Thank you. He says, really good. Thank you. I enjoyed shooting that video and I wanted to implore some cinematic techniques that I just came up with when I was just configuring the content. It's one of my favorite videos. I'm always recommended it. I had just got my upgraded microphone and I was in the process of, you know, trying to master audio, which is a constant, constant struggle. But I think we're really getting it here now. I think we're getting it here now. And anytime, you know, I'm open to constructive criticism. Thunder, if Thunder in the chat. He says, you ever run GTA on ultra settings? Not sure if that question is for me, but Thunder, speaking of kids, is one of is one of my kids. And coming up soon, I'll give you a little preview, but we're going to be, we're going to highlight that used price to performance, right? With OG Zen, like, please don't write off the significance and relevancy of the 1000 series, you know, first generation Ryzen, if you don't have a lot to spend. This this conversation are for my high end builders. So today I'm gonna do a speed run where we're gonna configure a, a high end gaming PC like if, with parts that are available today, parts that are available right now. Like if you didn't want to wait for Rocket Lake or if you didn't want to wait for even Zen 3, which is still very much around the corner, but they're not cheap, and you maybe wanted to even skip over first batch, wait for RTX 3070. We're going to configure a system with what we got right now that's also going to include the price of a monitor. So it will be somewhere in between the range of $1,100 USD to $1,300 to $1,400 USD. And we're going to talk about that a little later, but um, GTA on ultra settings is, is super CT, CPU intensive. Even at 1080p, um, I have ran it because I game on an 8700K right now which is due for an upgrade, right? We talked about this in the vlogs. We talked about this in the previous live streams. I either want to upgrade upgrade to, um, you know, to like a 9900K for 350 bucks just to wait to jump platforms for Rocket Lake for Intel's 11th gen series that's going to be on the 400 series chipset and we'll have PCIe 4.0. Their CPUs will be PCIe 4.0 compliant. And I think I just rather, rather much wait till then, although I had read early reports that I took as rumors, and rumors are a rumor until proven otherwise, but I took them as a rumor, but I could be wrong, but 400 series motherboards are set to support um, and, you know, Intel's 11th gen Rocket Lake, but I still much rather would prefer to upgrade the motherboard and CPU all at the same time, and I mentioned this in the previous vlog. Mr. Zombie, Mr. Zombiefy says, plan to upgrade my GPU and CPU for my HP Reverb G2 pre-order. I have on the way. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's um. Normally, when you when you when you're looking to upgrade, you know you're going to get a significant boost in performance. Like upgrading and just seeing those those gains, even if they're marginal, is just a great experience. But Speaking of the speaking of the FX series, I just want to note that the newer stuff doesn't make the older stuff obsolete. I said that earlier in the live stream, but it's true. I mean, at least not yet. Anyway, relevant platforms last long; they die hard. You look at how many people still use like Haswell CPUs and what have you, or even look at the FX 9590. We did a video on. I mean, even if you look at that video and how much interest and other other PC gamers came out and commented on that video about how they're still to this day using the you know FX 9590 series, has it aged well? Yes and no. The IPC is just not there. 
no matter how high you overclock it. But if you wa if you go back and watch that video and see the performance, you know we were getting it's it's no nothing to, it's nothing to you know ignore, right? It really isn't. You can get some really good performance if you play like at 1080p and lower the settings, like maybe high settings, not necessarily ultra, but um, and then even at a higher resolution, you're still you know you're still GPU bound, so the CPU isn't required to work as much, but it still needs it still needs to do its job, but it doesn't need to work as hard if that makes sense. But I mean, yeah, look at X, you know, platforms like X58, which is really popular here in the tech community. I start, I did a few X58 videos on the X5675 and even X79, and just some of those fourth generation and third generation Intel i7s. I mean, they have lasted for a long time and even with all these new architectures and newer CPUs from both Team Red and Blue they haven't necessarily became obsolete you know you may have you may miss out on certain instruction sets which may you know you may not be able to play certain games like if the game you know if the game requires AVX2 or AVX3 or something to that extent like a uh, like a CPU extension if the game requires that, then yeah, you might miss out on a few games. I know Apex Legend, just off the top of my head, is one of them. But I mean, you miss out on some extension sets with some of the newest, uh, some of the new, some of the newer CPUs. But the new stuff doesn't necessarily make them obsolete. It doesn't even make them irrelevant. They still hold a purpose, as we like to call here on this channel. That because we are used use PC tech enthusiasts and also what my guy Brian over at Tech yeah City likes to say. I see we have Savage Scientists. How you doing fam? I believe this is the first time I had an opportunity to interact with you here on the live chat. He says hello everyone. Hello to you. Hello to you. And also we see we have Trician. Ivan. Ivan's in the house. He says hey guys what are we talking about? So today's topical theme is and I know you already have a you have a PC. Ironically, you have a 36. I know you have a Ryzen 5 3600 Tricion, Um and we're going to talk about that CPU here. You know, I love talking about that six core, but we're going to talk about that CPU. But for those of you who just joined in, it's a good question, Savage Scientists, and you know Tricion. For those of you who just joined in, we're talking. You know, we're we're we're, we're not necessarily answering the question, but we're elaborating on it. And that and that is, should you build a gaming PC now? Or a high-end gaming PC now, or should you wait? And as someone with disposable income, if you yourself have disposable income, and this is something you either a been wanting to jump into and build a PC, and you you're just tired of hearing the wait the wait for this and wait for that. It seems like there's a new CPU launch every six months or seven months, and then there's refreshes on top of that. But you know we're elaborating on that topic. Should you build? Should you build a high-end PC now, or should you wait? What are the pros and what are the cons? Walter G says nothing wrong with views. I got an old AMD KG2500 running running an old version of Counter Strike. Nice. Yeah, nothing wrong with use. Nothing wrong with use at all. Something we advocate here on the channel. There are some things you just need to look out for when buying used PC parts. I myself am leveling up and mastering my understanding and knowledge of the process as I myself experiment and you know run risk of buying used parts but in an upcoming video on that subject on a, in an upcoming video right I'm going to upgrade my son's computer from an older generation to a Ryzen CPU and most of all the parts I picked up on the used market for just bargains and deals here locally and I want to show you that with with an estimated use budget, because I know depending on where you're at in the world, as Q mentioned earlier in the live stream, that you know use use prices aren't great everywhere in the world. Even here in the states, it still varies and it still depends on where you are, right? I like to imagine people in New York maybe pay higher prices than their parts. Maybe people out west have to pay a little higher too because they're just not not as close to uh, to any retailers, if you will, like Micro Center or Best Buy. But, you know, we're going to we're going to talk about that because I'm going to tally up, you know, how much that upgrade cost me from a used perspective and the yields my kids will get on this gaming PC. Um, 
Mr. Zombified makes a good point. You can't wait forever. Absol absolutely, man. No, no, you can't. I totally, totally agree with that. Like, no, you can't wait forever. And I mentioned this earlier in the live stream. I said, you know, if you have, if you have the funds available, if you have the money right there, cash money in hand, it's like, don't wait. Stop waiting. You're going to be waiting forever. Literally in the computer world, it's just, if you're just like waiting for the next big thing, you're going to be waiting forever. One thing I recommend is you try to, you know, build and design your system with, uh, with the path of, with a, with an upgrade path in mind. We're going to talk about that here. Matter of fact, let's, let's segue right into it. As I jump over to the chat and answer a few more questions, Savage Scientist says, my PC has the Intel 9700K for editing videos. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That's the eight core. That's the eight core, eight thread i7 has a really good actually you know what that cpu performs better than the 9900k in gaming simply because you know single single thread efficiency is more efficient when there are less threads to share the workload but uh the 9700k is is a great it's actually something i consider i consider the 9700k for a gaming specific cpu tristion says how old is your son uh he is I have more than one, so that's why that's why the pause. But the one that uses the computer the most, he's thirteen, and he doesn't really play like super demanding games. So you know, just a lot of like uh, a lot of mods and things like that. And I do have my oldest is nineteen, then I have another sixteen, and then I have my daughter. Savage Science says my next computer will be a custom build. I had it with the I had it with a Dell I had it with Dell crappy motherboards. Yeah, OEMs OEMs are hard to you know, OEM motherboards, you kinda get what you pay for with those. They're they're one of the biggest downsides to going with a custom, you know, going with a pre built. The BIOSes are BIOSes are normally locked and you can't do certain things on it because it's like modified for that manufacturer you know for dell really frustrating hands down savage scientists i'm glad you're going to custom build and if you have if you have any if you have any more questions about that pro about the build process feel free to hit it you know catch us here one of those the one of the live streams if you have any you know um if you have any questions or if you need any help along the way definitely hit us up here in the community let us know Walter G says, "Yeah, build now, like Mr. Zombie like Mr. Zombie Fly said. You can't, you can't wait forever, and not get it done. Absolutely. I mean, the games are here, so it's like, even with up the upcoming popular game like Cyberpunk 2077, it, you know it's coming out in November. Don't wait until it comes out to build. Like, look at the PC specs and try to build a system you know that can run the game if you really want to play it. You, you know, buy what you can now, upgrade later. We're gonna talk about that. I just want to jump back over in the chat." And uh, Thunder says 14, yeah. And Tiger Nation, which I'm just now realizing is is my older son. So uh, two of my two of my sons here, ironically joining us, joining us here on the live stream. That is my oldest, Zion. We just we just booted him out the nest, or he fell out. However you want to put it, he's uh, he's all he's off into the world now as a young adult. But um, but yeah. So let's jump over into. Let's jump over to PC Part Picker because when you when you're building, and we talked about this on other live streams, but when you're building, you first of all want to research your parts, and you want to stick to you want to stick to a platform you can maybe upgrade within your budget, right? Research your parts before you buy it, but that's assuming I already did all that. I see if you have bad habits, join us in the chat. He says, LOL, as soon as you build the next processor and video card will be coming out. So wait or not, you can't win. I mean, well, not necessarily because you could always upgrade to those parts. Just because they come out, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to jump on the next biggest thing. Especially if you haven't even got a year out of, you know, a year usage out of your hardware. So, I mean, that really depends, bad habit, that could really depend on a person's setup how old their system is if you're still on a ddr3 platform there's always going to be the next biggest greatest thing 
Um, I'm going to talk about this in Monday's blog, but now there's reports coming in that NVIDIA. NVIDIA is set to release a 20 gigabyte variant RTX 3080. But did anybody wait for... Did anybody wait for that? No, knowing that we were going to get, you know, in some form, either some type of super refresh, like we did with Turing, we knew that we were going to get one with Ampere, you know? So... Yeah, I mean, that, that just really depends on your setup and what you're currently using. How bad do you need to upgrade? Have you even, you know, outgrown your system yet? Q says, I'm 19 too, moving to Germany for higher education. Yep, that's right. He shared that with us a couple of live streams ago. Tricyon says, Savage Scientist, bro, what? There's no way. And Bad Habit says, I just bought the 3900 two months ago, 3900X two months ago, and now the 5000 series are coming out. Yeah, I mean, just bad habits. Just ask yourself, how much of that 19% IPC uplift do you need? Or, you know, the 3900X is still very much a capable CPU. And right now, they're actually priced um, really low. And another thing, the 5900X is what a 500 and 549 dollar CPU. Yeah, five hundred and forty nine dollars. Is the is the nineteen percent uplift worth five hundred and forty nine dollars to you? I don't know what GPU you're using, but you know, maybe more fat you know, faster storage or put that money towards upgrading your GPU down the road. It's to some people they they all have to weigh that option out. It really depends on how much of that upgrade is you know, how how much is that worth to you? How much is that nineteen percent worth to you? To want to upgrade from a 3900X, like you said, that you just got about 60 days ago. Which, I mean, we knew Zen 3 was coming even two months ago, but I don't think it's a bad buy. I don't think it's a bad buy now, simply because it doesn't. It you can save about $150 by going with the 3900X. To me, just saving $150 isn't necessarily worth the IPC. I'd rather go with the 3900X at a bundle, which I would jump over to Micro Center here to see, you know, how much they're going for new. But last time I checked, they were about $400. And I saw some used 3900Xs going for about 380. I mean, that's that's amazing. At that point, the 19% uplift just isn't worth it. I would even say just wait for Zen 4 if you're on a current 3000 series CPU. Hopefully, Zen 4 6000 series CPUs at this point will be compatible with um you know with the X570 chipsets because then that upgrade path would make most sense for most 3000 series users. And he says bad habit says that they say that they're using a 1070 for the win. That's a great graphics card. That's a great graphics card to pair with it either for 1080p or 1440p gaming. Savage Science says, I remember the good old days. Diamond Viper 2 made graphics cards for $400 in 1994. Ouch. Yeah. I mean, it seems like most of computer... It, felt, I really, it really feels like, I'm sorry, that computer, co computer components and their pricings, we've always been guinea pigs. They've always tried to figure out how much are, are people willing to pay. And if they're willing to buy it, then we're going to price it high. I think this is NVIDIA's strategy that they like to they like to implore now. Now we have, you know, fifteen hundred dollar graphics cards, which would have been I mean, that's still insane to this to think about now to this day, but even when the twenty eighty Ti came out, most people were like, Whoa, you know, twelve hundred dollar graphics card? Wow. Even and in ten eighty Ti when that was around a thousand and then and then the prices just keep going up. So Nvidia says gamers are willing to pay two thousand dollars for an RTX 4080 or 4090 super. Then they're going to price it and people are going to buy it. But yeah, it's unfortunate. But hopefully, Big Navi. Keep saying hopefully. I'm like real hopeful, right? But Big Navi is expected to come in and really, really take up the uh, you know, really, really shake up the the lower end pricing scheme because there will be more we'll have the higher end 6000 series the 6950 or what have you that is going to com you know compete with the RTX 3080 my fingers are crossed that we'll see a 3090 competitor like I would pay maybe <laughs> close to a thousand dollars for an AMD GPU 
Especially if it, it had more than 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Yeah, I, I really would. But jumping over to PC Part Picker, everybody's favorite, you know, everybody's favorite website when it comes to configuring their system. It's a little bit of sarcasm, but we're going to configure starters real quick here. A system that a little over a thousand dollars because while high end definitely has more than one tier uh, to me that's a starting point most people won't you know well if you're on a budget the idea of eight hundred dollars you're kind of like whoa I, I can't you know i was maybe thinking between five to six hundred dollars that's a good entry point when i talk budget bills with people off platform and even here in the comment sections on the channel that's normally a a, a price entry point most users try to target when they want to come in and build a budget system or a budget conscious system. So the idea of going north of a thousand kind of puts you into this higher end territory, if you will, to some degree, because most people still use APUs. They don't have dedicated graphics cards. Um, oh, we see, I see we have Chris. Chris, that's, I remember we have Chris that's joining us on the chat. How you doing? He says, I'm going to buy a 5600X, but still don't know what to do with GPU what would you buy and that would really depend on your resolution you play at me personally with the with the 5600x i game at a higher resolution so i would put my money in a decent gpu and even with the 5600x i would be because right now they just have the more superior gpus especially if you're looking to buy new i would go with an nvidia an nvidia gpu because most 30 series are just out of touch, out of hand, um, you can go with a 20 series GPU, like a super series variant. And we're going to talk about, oh, okay, he says, Chris says, Chris says 1080p. Bad Habit says, let me go back up a little bit. Bad Habit says, my last build was five years old. Gave away my i5 4690K, built and made the switch to AMD 3900X. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a significant, I, I'm preaching to the choir when I say this, but that's a significant upgrade path. But bad habit, I know you've, you know, if you've already felt the, uh, the, the difference in between, you know, fourth gen Intel to a 3900X. Walter says everyone seems to go with the RTX GPU. I mean, because right now, I mean, right now the fifty the fifty seven hundred XT is no slouch. Like it's a good graphics card, but the price hasn't really dropped enough to make it worth, say, like the three hundred to four hundred dollar price range. It's a it's a great fourteen forty p card, but with the thirty seventy at I believe a five hundred dollar price point, and it's going to be on the heels, if not faster than a twenty eighty Ti. That's insane. That's insane price to performance and you know, outside of if I wasn't going with an RTX, I would go with the 5700 XT. I really would, but just not right now, because Big Navi is literally right around the corner. That's one thing I would say. Wait, on you know, if you were looking at an AMD GPU, but an RT, RTX GPUs. I mean, if you like ray tracing and things like that, sure, you want to go with it. But I'm not even really going to, you know, I'm not going to discuss 30 series because they're so hard to find. But, you know, let's jump in really fast here and configure that th that $1,000 system. And, Chris, you'll see the GPU I'll go with, with, say, this here. It is an ATX case, and Walter says, I want to try an, R an R RX 5700 XT. Yeah, I, uh, I've i seen some tests with it in 1440p and 1080p. It's a great card. It's just that at the time, NVIDIA came out with the Super Series, and it just, again, they stole AMD's Thunder. And this is what I believe they're doing again with their October 29th. Our, you know, they're going to, the RTX 3070 drops on October 29th, but then we see our DNA 2 on October 28th, one, one day before NVIDIA is set to relaunch. That's it. And we may even see new graphics cards from Intel, who, or NVIDIA, I'm sorry. Who knows? But we're here. Let me make sure. Yep. All right. So we're on the window. So again, this system, we're going to start with the most important part, right? Arguably CPU, CPU motherboard. We'll start with the motherboard. Go with B B550. B550. You may as well. I just want to note, and I'm going to talk about this in a vlog, but Asus has already come out and they said that you know they will not be launching BIOS updates to support Zen 3 CPUs. So if PCIe 4.0, if that's something you're interested in, 
I highly recommend you go with the B550 chipset. Even if you're interested in a Z3, a Zen 3 CPU in general, go with the B550 chipset. I say B550 because most people are interested in overclocking their systems or overclocking their CPUs. But the X570 is essentially an enthusiast chipset, whereas the B550 and then even have the A520 chipsets. Those those are for you know your uh, people who don't want to overclock or people who just want to plug the CPU in and game. Bad Habit says, how do you know if you have enough power from your PSU? I'm running a 500 watt EVGA and I feel like my new build needs at least a 600 watt. I'm going to assume that's the power supply unit. Well, I'm not sure if you've used Bad Habit, if you haven't used PC Part Picker, but PC Part Picker will estimate your wattage based on the parts that you've picked out. And you'll see here in a second, once we, once we start configuring this system here, but you know, with a uh, with a 3900X, I believe the TDP is the same as the uh, 5900X. That's another thing AMD has been able to do by refining that seven nanometer node, and that is get get a 19% IPC uplift while also maintaining the same TDP, which I believe is 105 watts. That is for you know Ryzen 5000. It's at 105 watts is the TDP. And you say you have a 1070, which I believe has like 150 or 200 watt TDP. Altogether, under full system load, like under a gamma load, I would say depend. I mean, what what's the 80 plus 80 plus certification on your power supply? Is it bronze? Is it is it gold? Um, because you have even on a 500 watt power supply unit, you have enough overhead to be able, to, especially if you're not overclocking. To be able to stay underneath your underneath your wattage, Chris says you can find PSU calculations online. There will be a form in the website. Yeah, there are different. There are certainly a, many different tools. As you can see here, as we select our motherboard, right, and this is our list here. We select that we have our B550 motherboard, and it's calculated the watts to the system we've configured. I know I said I was going to do it. I forgot. I already did it earlier, so there's that. Save this a little bit of time. But as you can see here, the estimated wattage for this system is 299 watts. And the estimated wattage here for this system, which came out to about like a little over $1,000, $1,089 to be exact, is about 299 watts. And I still went with the 750 watt power supply. Why? Because two of the main parts you would almost indefinitely want to upgrade within say a three to six month period, three to five month period, is your CPU and your GPU. So you wanna make sure you leave yourself overhead. That way your power supply has enough efficiency to, you know, to, uh, to run your system at full, at full system load, because it, it depends. If you're, if you're doing a, um, you know, a CPU intensive load, like rendering or like a Cinebench, you're gonna see, you know, the, the wattage go up, especially if you're overclocking. I will say that using the Kuman watt meter tester that I have downstairs in the lab, the Ryzen 5 1600X and an RTX 2080 Ti I've been doing 4K test on, it hasn't even maxed out at 300 watts. <laughs> and that's on a 750 watt 80 plus gold rated EVGA power supply unit. And that's not overclocked. The GPU turbos up to 1,920 megahertz, so the GPU is is running at stock, or it's just using it's letting GPU boost do its thing. And that's with the CPU actually overclocked at 4 gigahertz. I am not touching 300 watts during a uh, during a Ghost Recon Breakpoint synthetic benchmark test. And I did that test off camera a few times, just testing the watt meter, and was really blown away at the efficiency of Ryzen. So. Even at 500 watts and at 1070. Now, when you're ready to upgrade your GPU, you may you may want to consider getting, you know, a uh, a higher rated power supply unit. Bad habit. And Walter says I would just go with a 750 watt power supply just to cover for most upgrades. That's actually very interesting you say that, Walter, because that's exactly what you know I went with here for this you know this slapstick build here, a 750 watt fully you know gold rate gold certified well and it's fully modular so you're going to reduce clutter and improve airflow in your case by just eliminating any extra cords you don't need i highly recommend fully modular power supplies i think they're really cool especially you can use 
uh, custom cables. You can use custom cables with your system to just really give it that pizzazz that you uh, that you would want to encapsulate in a personal system because consoles have a purpose, but PCs have personality. They have character. But yeah, 750 watt power supply. It definitely leaves you with adequate headroom for you know future upgrades. If you're usually most users who go over a thousand are you know they're using dual GPUs, so they're running either SLI configuration or a Crossfire configuration. But normally you don't necessarily need a thousand watt power supply unit for you know a single in, a single GPU solution and a six core even a twelve core CPU. Um, so yeah. Reinstalling PSUs is a pain in the butt. They are, especially if they're not modular. But it's just one of the, one of the things. One of the things I think is a pain in the butt is cleaning fans. Right? It's a very delicate, time-consuming process, and it's one thing that, in my opinion, if I'm doing a clean for a cleaning for a client, just slows down the process because you just really want to take your time not to damage the bearings, but also you know get all the dust and just the, anything that caked onto the fans. But you know, cleaning the system. Clean the system. That's one of my least favorite things to do. Which a little bit of lab history. I uh, one of my first videos was where I cleaned a uh, AMD system I had bought off Offer Up, and the thing was just gross. It was disgusting. I get sick to this day. Think about it. If you're brave enough, in a little scavenger hunt format, you can find it here on the channel. Um, you can find it here on the channel. It's one of my earlier videos. So excuse the horrible audio excuse the you know uh mundane delivery if you will but it was some of my earlier work but the task the job of cleaning that computer it's all documented from you know me buying it bringing it home to cleaning it and even testing it to see which parts worked it's a real interesting watch i highly recommend you give it a watch after after this one you can find it on the channel but i want to note that i also decided <clears throat> excuse me to go with a ryzen 5 3600 because I actually see them lower than $199, especially at Micro Center. And I'm saying I'm saying $199 for one because I want to stay under the lowest, at least right now. AMD is rumored, you know how I feel about those, but AMD is rumored to re be releasing a 5600, which they likely will, because it was absent from the keynote, but it's starting to appear in some of you know some uh, some slides here recently that. You know, we're going to see non-X variants coming up here at slightly lower prices. I'm going to imagine somewhere between $200 to $249. We'll see a 5600 But if you want to build right now, a high-end PC right now, the 3600 is right there almost with the 9900K and an 8700K, some of Intel's latest and greatest, some of their fastest. It has great single-core performance, and most of the time you can find them under $200 from most retailers. Okay? On that B55 chipset, you'll be able to take advantage of PCIe 4.0. So that's the reason why I went with a one terabyte Western Digital M.2 to take advantage of the twice those uh, twice the twice the bandwidth on those lanes. 16 gigabytes of Rip Jaws memory, right? Why 32 and why 3600 megahertz CL16? That is the sweet spot for Ryzen 3000. And now other reports are coming in that 4,000 megahertz rate of speed is going to be the sweet spot for the 50, the 5,000 series Ryzen CPUs. And I'm wondering if that's because AMD now has been able to increase the infinity clock because the CPU has, you know, or memory has more than one clock, right? You have the memory speed, you have the infinity clock, and then you also have the memory controller clock speed. They all have, excuse me, they all have, their, they each have their own respective clock speed. The affinity fabric, they're in one by one by one ratios. The affinity fabric is normally half the rate of speed of your DDR4. So 30, at 4,000, keep it simple, whole math, at DDR4, 4,000 megahertz, the affinity clock speed by default will be running at 2,000 megahertz. So on this, with this RAM, even on the B550 chipset, you will be able to enable, you know, an XMP profile for this RAM speed. Or if you're comfortable with doing a manual overclock, try to get about another two to 300, um, you know, megahertz on top of that. So if you can't quite hit 4,000 on 3,600 rated 
3600 megahertz related rated speed try to find somewhere between 38 to 4000 that way you're at the sweet spot that's when you get to you know if you're if you upgrade to a Ryzen 5000 series CPU but again the B550 chipset supports PCI 4.0 support all the new Zen, Zen 3 CPUs all you need to do is update the BIOS uh, most bi big BIOS manufacturers, large BIOS manufacturers like MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, they've already confirmed that they've, as promised, AMD has, you know, started distributing the necessarily Agesa and BIOS update to support Zen 3. So they're coming. They're out now. So even if you wanted to build now, you can. You're taking advantage of high-speed storage on that PCIe 4.0 on those lanes. And... You know the case. The case kind of is what it is. I kind of I like this case, but you know if you're a fan, whether you're a fan or not of RGB, Corsair makes some really really awesome cases. They're they're not they're not sponsors of the channel, but I use a lot of Corsair products. And this IQ, the 4000X, is a great mid tower case, so you're going to save space. Um, comes with three fans and a controller. It's just an amazing case, and it looks looks fun and easy to build in, as well. So. Yeah, I went with this case, but really, you can you can pick any case that's within your own budget and to your liking. It's one of those things to where even if I'm working with a client and, you know, we're configuring a system, I say, you can tell me some things you personally would want in a computer case. Like, do you want a full-size case, like a really large case? Or do you want a mid-tower case, so like a medium-sized case? Or do you want, you know, a, a small-size case in like a mini ITX or even a micro, you know, ATX build so really this is one of the one of the most personality driven decisions you can make with your you know with your system and that is the case but you know one thing you want to one thing you want to make sure the case has that that promotes is good airflow right and while this fan while this computer comes with three fans you can see here the front looks like it's tempered glass so the air is going to come in here through the side so that's something to consider normally you'd want like an you want an open a, uh, like a mesh solution there to prom to have good airflow promotion because in my opinion you want cool air to come in through the front of the system pass over ah, get a side view here there we go you want cool air to come in through here to pass over your parts and then out through the back or out through the top but as you can see here in this reference picture they're even using a look like 120 or 140 millimeter um, AIO with this system so and even that lo looks like a uh, EATX motherboard so that's interesting too for mid size for mid mid size tower case but and then it has tempered glass here for the windows so you can see your side a basement for the power supply just some things you want to look for in a case you also want to make sure we talked about this but it ha it supports the necessary input output solutions that matches with your CPU. So again, you, if you want to make sure your motherboard supports USB 3.2, Gen 1, um, and here, as you can see here, motherboard form factor, ATX, micro ATX, mini ATX. I talk about um, I talk about PC part picker so much. It's just a it's a great tool. It really is. I mean, for you to just learn your parts and see what's compatible and see what's not compatible, even to get a comprehensive look at the part and even view compatible fan coolers motherboards and what have you um just an amazing tool they do aggregate the pricing prices but i would i would go on a manual hunt but this is fairly accurate for the most part from what i've seen but not a bad mid-sized tower case and then for the power supply unit like like walter and myself has mentioned that um you know 750 watts even for turing which has a high power draw is adequate because some of the new Ryzen CPUs don't have high TDPs, right? And you can only overclock it so far, so there's only so much heat that's going to be and watts that's going to be generated. And this is something Intel is also. And we're going to talk more about Intel. We're going to talk about Team Blue a little bit more on this live stream. But that's something Intel is looking to improve. Is you know trying to get decent yields on 14 nanometer at lower power draws, so higher clock speeds and what have you. But 750 watts on 80 plus gold fully modular power supply is a healthy spot to be in for a high end rig. Okay, for a high end rig. And it's fully modular. So even if you see, for example, the only connectors we'll be using for this system is for the graphics card, the PCIe, because our NVMe is gets its power directly from the motherboard. 
So instead of having to like tuck the cables, any unnecessary cables, we're really only running what three three cables from the power supply. So the system's going to look really clean and just really uh, like really professional built and give it that nice fresh custom look. Walter G or Mrs. Amify says he loves loves my NZXT H100 case. Yeah, NZXT makes some really just like sharp and uh, sharp and futuristic like cases i like nzxt cases and yes yeah, see walter g says nzxt makes some nice cases they really do i have a uh, throwback a phantom 630 special edition phantom 630 sitting in the closet here in the lab and I, it's been in my mind to do like a super high-end render rig with like three gpus three titans or something like that because the case is just massive and it has it's support for like 220 millimeter fans solutions and it's a gunmetal. It reminds me a little bit of RoboCop. It's sleek design. Um, yeah, and bad and bad habit says Nwin 904. I meant to say, Nwin makes some really good cases. I've grown to uh, I've grown to like some Nwin cases and Lee and Lee too. I picked I have a Lee and Lee case. We're going to a mini ITX build on that. Actually, it's going to be a series. So, if you haven't, I got to get this shameless plug in right quick, right quick. If you haven't, I welcome you to subscribe here to the channel. It really helps us grow and it really helps keep the community connected because we're going to, you know, we're going to do more videos on this and on this subject. So if you have it, I hope that on this live stream, this live stream, this will be the day that I earn your subscription. Even if you're here on the live stream or here on the live stream. Yeah, if you're here on the live stream, I still hope I earn your subscription, right? But if you're here on the replay, if you're, if you're here on the replay and you're joining us, I hope, and you've watched this far, I totally appreciate your time. Um, I hope that I've been education, you know, and informative and entertaining enough to earn your subscription here to Inside the Lab with the notification bell on because sometimes YouTube notification system isn't all that great. All right. Um, Walter G says, I have to check out the NWIN 904. I want to do an ITX build. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like some of the ITX boards that have come out here recently. Um, Especially on the Z490 chipset, but again, I said if anything, no, I, I I'm re I'm sharing too many details. I want to share, I want to save some of it for that series. So yeah, Walter G, be sure be sure to be a lookout for that one. All right, but let's let's jump back to our system because I want to point out that you know it has 32 gigabytes of RAM, so we're going to be equipped for streaming. Six cores, you can stream on six cores. You know, lower the settings depends on what you want to, you know how you want to present the live for your audience you know it, rather you want to game at 720p low settings to maximize frame rate or do you want to shoot for better quality so you stream at 1080p maybe mid you know high medium settings but the extra cores are going to help for sure you're under $199, so it's not a redundant purchase, in my opinion, because the 5600X costs $299. So you're still getting good price of performance. You're still getting really good value if you were to buy the CPU now. Same thing with the motherboard. It's a good investment. Why? The B550 chipset isn't going anywhere anytime soon, fam. And Asus has came out and said that no, B4, their B450 motherboards although they announced new B450 motherboards, but their previous generation B450 motherboards aren't getting Zen 3 support. So if you bought one or you buy one now, just keep that in mind that you may be limited to 3000 series and you may have to take a whole platform jump. Then we have one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. That's non-volatile memory. It's super, super fast. I use NVMe's in the Core Shredder build and my Snow White build here that I'm using for this live stream and that I use to I edit my videos off of a uh, 500 gigabyte Samsung Pro NVMe SSD, and I have my OS and some other programs on a 250 gigabyte SSD and a couple one terabyte SSDs. So I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with mechanical drives, which I also have on the system, but it's for redundant storage, it's for backup storage, and for games I don't play as much. Which here recently, it's it's been a lot. Um, Chris says building ITX setup is much harder than ATX in my opinion. Okay, All right, fair game. I've uh, to me the way I build, I like the case because it's so much smaller. I feel like although I have big hands, so it's it's hard to really get 
in some of those places. With the bigger case, you do have a lot more space to work in. But um, but yeah, all good points. And then for our GPU, which, excuse me, the 1660 Super. It has 16 gigabytes. Now, here's the thing with the 1660 Super. It's an adequate car now. Even if the 37 came out, 3070 comes out, or there's other, you know, uh, big Navi GPUs that are going to be able to get the job done at 1440p. They will likely come priced a little higher, but you can't expect more performance. The 1660 Super, though, is just a solid GPU for 1080p, right? And even 1440p, if that was something you're interested in, because altogether, the cost of this system with the monitor and the base system, which I didn't include keyboard and mouse, because that's a that's a that's a part in my opinion that really comes down to user preference some people may not like the noise that mechanical keyboards bring some people don't mind them because they game with headsets on they can't really hear it maybe they live with roomies and you know it, it the tapping noise aggravates then maybe some people are more competitive on membrane you know maybe your solution calls for a wireless solution but then there are those who think that you know wired solutions provide you know better dpi or what have you it really comes down to your preference and how you play because you know if we jump over if we jump over to a a 1080p monitor right and i just chose the msi optics because it's it's priced it's priced decent enough I mean, on top of your, on top of the cost, say for this system, which was what a thousand eighty nine dollars, aside from from the cost, you're looking at about a thousand dollars. That's the computer, and three to four for a decent monitor. In my opinion, that's either if you go 1080p or 1440p. And this monitor has a 144 hertz refresh panel. It is FreeSync and but it's IPS, which most people favor, and that's something we're going to talk about in a future video. I don't, it's, we will go too far off topic as far as the benefits versus IPS versus VA panels and what the difference is specifically. Um, that's a whole different live stream. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely be sure to subscribe and be on the lookout for that live stream that is coming up here very soon. I want to talk about that a little bit more because your monitor is one of your most important buys. This is going to determine not only if you're a streamer, your audience's experience, but also your experience from a competitive outlook and also from just a perspective of overall enjoyment and also depending on the type of games you play. So for competitive style games, that's your Fortnites if you still play, right? Shout out, shout out. If, you, if you play Fortnite competitive, let me know in the chat. Like seriously, let me know. I don't. I'm not gonna drop it from the benchmarks, but if if I should do more content on it, let me know. Especially with the newer hardware. But um, and Walter says agree 100%. 144 monitors needed. Yeah, and you know some people some might even want to go higher to 360 or what have you or 244 hertz. It depends on how competitive you want to be and you know how much how much of an edge you want to gain over your over your um, opponents but 144 hertz is a good entry level start especially once you figure this system depending on the settings you play at you might have to lower some of the settings but at 1080p this system you wouldn't need to you wouldn't need resync rather this gpu you know or this panel this msi panel supports g-sync through free sync which if you if for the uninitiated nvidia has decided to support you know some monitors with uh with g-sync that don't have g-sync but it's been very very shaky ground if you ask me but i've lucked up in the msi optics panel i use does have g-sync support but this system here depending on the game and depending on the setting can really deliver you know can get you close to that refresh rate right you may just have to play around with the settings but even on a 1650 Super and a Ryzen 5 1600X, Fortnite was in the territory of what you would want to have at like a 120 hertz panel. Um, Chris says, but the human eye can't see more than 30 FPS. That's a running gag and a running meme. Um, if only we saw the world in, in, in the eyes of a, of a monitor, right? But you're right, the human eye 
the human eye may or may not be able to only see more than 30 fps i've read multiple different articles on it i will say this you may not be able to like notice but you will feel the difference you know playing from say if i was able to in person sit you down in front of a system that was like locked to 30 fps versus a system that had like an uncapped frame rate um you would feel that there would be a significant difference it was one of the reasons why i jumped I just went ahead and said, you know what, I'm done with the consoles because I was done with that, you know, with the frame rate being locked at 30 FPS and games like Mad Max that I liked playing at the time and some of the Arkham games weren't even hitting that. Like Mad Max was somewhere between 10 to 17 frames per second. And I was like, this is just horrible. And then I played it on PC and I was like, man, I'm enjoying this game even more. And I did that. I went back and I played games like Skyrim and uh gta 5 and the witcher 3 i waited because i knew i didn't want to play those on lock i think the witcher 3 is even like 1080p low settings on consoles or 720p low settings on the consoles but yeah i mean it really it, it comes down to input lag right the higher the higher the refresh rate um the better the the better just overall experience the game will feel look is debatable but for most competitive games, you want that higher refresh rate, you want that higher response time. It's going to help you be competitive, especially over people who say maybe are playing on a console. I see we have the Life Bug Gamer, which is I think I don't think we've had the opportunity of rapping with you here on a live stream. But the Life Bug Gamer says, "Bro, tell me if I can play 60 FPS on 1650 Ti with Ryzen." 4600H. I believe those are. I believe the 4600H. That's a. Is that a mo? Is that a, on a laptop? I think it's on a laptop. I'm not sure about the 1650 Ti. I think you might mean 1650 Super. Which, I mean, has it, it have no problems hitting 60 FPS. Just need a little bit more, a little bit more details. Chris says, for me, there's a huge difference between 60 and 144 hertz. Absolutely. For me, when I had jumped onto this 3440 by 1440p monitor or my MSI optics, the Mag 34 1CQ, um, just going from like 60, 1080p 60 to even 1440p 100 was like, I was like, man, it took a little bit, you know, getting used to. And that was on an RTX 2080. First, it was a 1080 Ti and then it was the RTX 2080. And so I was, you know, past my refresh rate and not all the games because i am a graphic monger right let me switch over let me switch over here and get personal i'm a graphic monger i like i like good graphics in my games, so i normally try to dial up the settings and most of the games i play so like for assassin creed i like to play that in high settings and i don't really hit my monitors refresh rate which is okay so long as i'm like over 60 or somewhere between 60 and 75 but yeah bug life gamer that depends on uh what game are you referring to if that's if the if that setup can can hit 60 fps i mean eight gigs of ram uh is the one is your one hurdle is your one obstacle that may be in the way of achieving that refresh rate if that's your desired refresh rate that's because your system is also going to hog up some of that available memory so depending on the game you're playing eight gigs may or may not be enough you might experience some stutters. GTA 5. Okay. Yeah, I would I would lower the you're gonna definitely want to lower the settings in GTA 5. And especially if that's 1080p. You're gonna to want to lower the settings in GTA 5. GTA 5 is very much a CPU intensive game. CPU intensive game. And it's so much to there's so much to calculate and to render and for the memory to communicate with the GPU and the CPU, right? There's so much going on, on in that game. And it, lowering your settings could help, you know, achieve that refresh rate. And with GTA 5, you can, you have a wide range of graphic settings to choose from to really find that balance. What I like to say to find that balance between graphic settings and playable frame rates, right? Try to find that balance. GTA 5 has a great synthetic benchmark tool. Um, that I use most most large most other much larger tech tubers use it as well, but GTA 5 has a built-in 
synthetic benchmarks. So, you know, mess around, play around with your settings and try to see, try to find that balance between frame rate and graphic settings. And for CS, for CSGO. Yeah, and CSGO too, CSGO too is another CPU intensive game. And yeah, you'd definitely be past 60, uh, 60 FPS in CSGO. Um, the Ryzen, the Ryzen 4000 mobile chipsets, I don't think those are Zen 3. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on this. But I believe those are actually very much Zen 2 dies and not Zen 3 dies. Hence, this is the reason why Zen 3 was not 4000 CPUs. And AMD thankfully did jump over and just used the 5000 naming scheme because they had already released 4000 series CPUs for, you know, mobile. So, and 4000 series APUs. But uh, yeah, and speaking of, you know, monitors and just and gaming. So if you're at if you're at 1080p, you want to stick to, you know, I say 27 inches is a, is a decent size. Most competitive gamers I've seen, they just, they're like a little lower, like 23.8 or 24 inch monitors. But 20, 144 hertz is a great great panel. And one thing I also want to note that. Even with FreeSync, if Big Navi is going to really be, if Big Navi is really going to, you know, bring this performance uplift that AMD even hinted at, they showed us in uh, in their keynote, right? And if you haven't, if you haven't seen their keynote, Lisa Sue showed us a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting details on the future of Radeon. And that how they are tiptoeing in the 4K gaming rail, realm and hardware accelerated ray tracing. I'm raising the roof. And, I mean, if you're a 90s kid or 80s baby like myself, you remember raising the roof. We raised the roof when we was hype, when we was pumped. And I'm hype. I'm pumped for Radeon graphics, for AMD's Radeon graphic division because we don't know the pricing. Yes, that is to be determined. That is TBA or TBD, if you will. We know there's going to be more than one. We know there's going to be a series of, you know, uh, not a series. It's going to be multiple 6,000 series GPUs, right? If AMD, if Radeon sticks to their scheme like they did with Polaris, you know, we get like a, six, a 60, 6,000, a 650 or a 680 and a 660 and a 670 and a 690 or something to that extent and a, six, and a 680 or a 6080, however they name it. I imagine there's going to be more than one. And so you're going to have options. AMD showed us, you know, a Radeon graphics card, 6000 series, big Navi, if, you, if you're unaware, or RDNA 2. They showed us a performance here. And that was at 4K. We saw no stutters. And it did, you know, look smooth. It is their benchmark. So we have to obviously wait for reviewers. I don't, I likely, I am not going to get one sent for me. Excuse me, from AMD. They're just not. But if I can get my hands on one, absolutely. I want to test it because I am excited for hardware-based ray tracing, for hardware-accelerated ray tracing. And it's one of the reasons why I was an early adopter of RTX. And that is something I talked about, you know, in a previous live stream. So I'm not going to go too deep into that conversation or into that topic and that discussion. But I... I jumped in and went ahead and brought a 2080 because I couldn't get my hands on a 2080 Ti at the time. They were hard to get. And I bought a 2080. I wanted to test ray tracing. Like, I really did. I really did. And so now I'm excited that AMD is going to join that forefront and maybe even give us affordable hardware accelerated based ray tracing. This could spell disaster for NVIDIA if they're not able to stabilize their supply issue, which Jensen says it's a demand issue. You should find. You should read that article. It was an interesting read. The the Lifebug Gamer says thanks for the advice, bro. And I see Chris. You're welcome. Anytime, fam. I see Chris says if you were on a budget, would you buy a R3 3100 for 4K gaming? Is the CPU so useless in high res gaming? Um, you here's the thing. You can't no yes and no, yes and no. My studies, my findings, and I've tested this. With the Ryzen 5 1600X, I have, I do get high utilization on the CPU, but 
the difference in between a higher CPU is maybe within one to two frames. So I would see the test on my 8700K with the same GPU and it would maybe get a frame to two frames higher. The CPU isn't necessarily useless. It just doesn't have to, it just doesn't have to work as hard, right? But it's still very much needed to render the pixels. Even at 4K, it's just the GPU is the bottleneck and that is good in this situation. But the 3100, you can. Yes, you could pair with for 4K gaming, especially if that's all you plan on doing is 4K gaming. You may see high CPU utilization, but it won't, you know, say switching to a faster CPU with more cores won't necessarily give you more frames to make that switch worth it. I would suggest it if you had if you had plans on doing more with your system at 4K. So if you were a photographer, a video editor, if you were a content creator, then pairing a Ryzen 3 3100, you know, on a 4K station may not be, you know, may not be the best choice or the best decision in terms of what you would have to, uh, what you would get on the content creation side. But if, if you're on that AM4 socket, you could upgrade, you could buy the 3100 now, you're going to, you're going to save some money. So you could, you can buy it now an upgrade but the cpu doesn't have to work as much at 4k but it definitely still has to work my finding is the faster the cpu the faster the cpu the less it has to work but if the cpu doesn't have good ipc then it has to work a little harder so you'll see higher cpu utilization um i've tested this a couple of times again with the 2080 ti and a ryzen 5 1600x i would see high cpu utilization and once I would compare my numbers to other content creators and other tech tubers numbers, we were very much within margin, especially when I would look at all the RTX 2080 Ti benchmarks. Now, one resolution I'm interested in testing that in though, um, Chris, is 1440p. And I do plan on doing some 1440p content because at that resolution, you're still very much GPU bound. But if the game is CPU intensive, if it's an open world game, the CPU is very much still a factor because graphics cards, they're responsible for only cal for only rendering graphics. That is what the GPU's job is. That's what their CUDA, the CUDA cores inside are designed to do. They're designed to render graphics. Now, when you come to like AI, advanced math and calculations and topography calculations and, you know, simulating simulating AI and things like that, those are still CPU tasks. So even at 4K, the CPU definitely has a task. And the faster the CPU, the faster it can do those things at that resolution. Because you're GPU bound, the lower the CPU utilization. If that makes sense. Um, if that makes sense, Chris. Yeah, I would do it. I would do it. I see. And the Bug Likes Gamer says, is the RX 570 a good GPU than a 1650 Ti? and 1660 it depends on if that rx 570 is under a hundred dollars because it's the 16 the 1650 super and a 1660 non-super both are very much faster than the 570. mr v mr zombify says i can't wait for some new amd P amd gpus yeah uh me too brother me too I, uh, I, I've been eager. I was so let down from the Radeon R7. I wanted that GPU. I wanted to root for it. I wanted it to succeed. I wanted AMD to get their hands dirty in the higher end market. Like, come on, AMD, give us an expensive GPU. AMD will be surprised at how many enthusiasts, like budget conscious uh, shoppers they have that would support their higher end GPUs. And I'm really thinking we're going to see that. I'm really thinking we're going to see that. With RDNA 2, the 5700 XT was very close to there, and you know it was in the $400 price range, but it was only really competing with the 2070. And then, and then at the time, Nvidia then gave us the Super Series, which the 2070 Super then you know kind of made the 5700 XT like, man, you know it wasn't touching 2080 territory. But AMD likes, you know, they, they're slowly showing us, even with their CPUs now, coming in at $50 more. And I predicted this in last weekend's live stream, which if you're new here to the channel, you just join us. We go live every Saturday. 
We go live every Saturday about 12.45 p.m. EST. But, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm detracting. I don't want to, I'm going to, I'm going to get back on topic. I want to get back on track because, you know, there are so many, so many different options you can go with in the GPU cat area, the bugs life, and also don't ignore the used market on both AMD side too. But yeah, I want AMD to succeed with high end GPU. I really do. Hopefully big Navi will give us that. See, Walter says, Walter G says, getting ready to build a R7 3700X with X570 MOBO and plan to get an RX 5700 XT. That's a brilliant combo. I think the 3700X is a sleeper A core, right? It's not as fast as a 9900K, but it is within margin. It is within margin of a 9900K at, you know, $100 less, give or take, about $80, $90, $80 to $900 less with a much more robust upgrade path. On the AM4 socket, and that X570 chipset. So even, you know, you can get that 3700X now, Walter G, and, you know, play around with, say, a 5950X. It's an $800 CPU, the 16-core, 32-thread CPU. But, you know, on that chipset, you you have you have a lot of options. Mr. V Mr. Zombified says, nice, yeah. That's a, that's a nice setup. Walter G says, MSI X570A Pro. Is the MOBO going to use? I, I too was looking at that motherboard. It's a good it's a good option motherboard. It really is. It really is. Um, you know, I've been seeing some X5. I've been seeing a few MSI X570 motherboards go here for a bargain. That's going to come up in this uh, in this swap video we're going to do when I upgrade my kid's computer. Um, and then I see we oh we have me chant. All right, Demetrius. That's Demetrius is in the house. He says good afternoon, fellow tech entrepreneurs and enthusiasts. Yes, what's happening? Thanks for joining in. We're talking to, you know, today's topical theme is, uh, you know, high-end gaming PC. Do you, do you build now or do you wait? And just to get those of everybody who just joined in on us, if, you know, if you if you just joined in on us, like Demetrius has. So we've talked about, you know, the some of the pros and cons to buy it now. We've looked at the system here we configured, which is on a little, little on the high-end side because the budget... Uh, surpasses a thousand dollars which when you're in that when you're past a thousand dollars in my opinion you're kind of in that higher end range right and what makes this build so high end most importantly is our storage solution one terabyte m.2 taking advantage of that b550 pcie 4.0 um compatibility 32 gigabytes of g scale rip jaws 3600 megahertz cl16 memory so the sweet spot Sweet spot for Zen 2 3000 series CPUs, and I like to imagine that even on a manual overclock, up the voltage by 1.45, keep the time is the same. You could probably do 3800 if you would post. You know, if that's keeping the Infinity fabric clock by default, and just up in the uh, up in the memory's clock speed about another 200. I don't think you'd get much of a, a boost, but Again, I mentioned this earlier. For those of you who joined, if you were to upgrade to a Ryzen 5000 series CPU, the sweet spot is now 4000 megahertz. And then we have a 1660 Super. It's going to be a great for 1080p high-end gaming. I mean high-end, like high refresh rates. And this, and this car can very much game at 1440p, 2560 by 1440p. Believe it or not, this, this GPU... Could he's or could also you know run 4K? You can. I would be, I believe the for 4K, the minimum required amount of VRAM. That's this here. That's how much you know physical RAM modules are on the graphics card. Is six gigabytes. That's a good starting point out for four. It's a good starting point for 4K. You want your graphics card to have at least six. My understanding was you could do it at four. It really depends on the game. Obviously, you'll have to maybe play at 4K low settings, um, but this card too could run at 4K if maybe you know you wanted to run at 30 frames per second and get a console-esque like 4K experience because you know you're going to upgrade in the future. Which I saw Walter over in the chat mention that they plan on upgrading here soon, right? After De after Demetrius said, yeah, he's, everybody says, hey, and Walter says he's planning on upgrading in the future. Upgrading is awesome, and on the subject of upgrading, this system 
say you wanted say we were going to upgrade this system and one a good rule of thumb in my honest opinion let me switch back here and jump back in the chat because walter says or demetrius says that hey all thanks for the shout out my wife is listening hello to uh to the missus appreciate both of you guys spending some of your saturday here with us during this live stream and walter says build for high end just shop for deals yeah uh, if you like if you can like my wife she does this with our grocery shopping i used to make fun of her because i'm like i don't want to go to more than one grocery store but you know she, now more is more now than ever it's a little easier because everything is just dropped into our trunk so i don't mind it as much now but yeah still shop for deals right and we have a large size family, which I believe Demetrius does too. But you guys have a beautiful family. And we're friends on Facebook, me and me and me chant one, two, three. Um, but you know, building for building for a high end and shop for deals is one of the smartest things you can do. But on top of that, stick in within your budget and still getting the performance you're looking for, that is arguably just as important. But even at a thousand dollars or all together with our monitor, which if you were looking at a, let me jump back here. If you were looking at even a 1440p monitor, which I said for either one for 1080p or 1440p. So if you were uninterested in doing competitive based games, you likely want, and you're all about like myself, I play single player games. I play, you know, games like The Witcher 3 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey and, and Fallout, although the Fallout, it will Fallout 3 and and RPGs like that, like one of my favorite, you know, Dragon, uh, Dragon Age was some of my favorite RPGs. Which I, we need a new Dragon Age, right? Like, if you play Dragon Age in the chat, let us know. Dragon Age was an, it was an amazing RPG, but I, I like single player games, so this is why I went with a higher resolution. But if you're on a competitive scene and you're all about maintaining that competitive edge, you want that higher refresh rate. 14, a higher graphic resolution isn't going to give you a competitive edge. It's just going to help you see more. But in most cases, most games are ran like CS:GO and, and Fortnite, even and just competitive games in general like Dota, what have you. All those games they're not really played at high fidelity resolutions, and they're not even ran in like high fidelity settings. They try to keep it competitive. It's more so about the response with competitive games. It's more so about immersion, in my opinion, with single player games. So you can get that in a 1440p panel. 2560 by 1440p panel do you have different options here i i like this lenovo but hear me out fam because you know you could you have options but this acer this 27 inch acer at 75 hertz at 219 and i i would like i would like to mention full disclaimer i understand you know like as you can see here this price is relative to me to where i am located i am in maryland this is my micro center by the way parkville great people love to go there haven't been there in a while but uh i do plan on going here soon we need some more parts for um for that mini itx build coming up but it, these prices are relative to me but like walter said build for high end and shop for deals shop where you can get savings rather that be best buy new egg Amazon, normally accessible to most people through, you know, across the world, especially here stateside. But this monitor has a 75 hertz refresh panel, or 7500 hertz, and it is an IPS an IPS monitor. So you're going to get vibrant colors and and better response time. Now, 75 hertz, no, it's not a lot, but even at most settings, our graphics card at that resolution, you're going to want to tone it down play most of your games at you know if you're if 1440p is a resolution if 1440p is a resolution you're interested in and you know if you're gra you first want to know that your graphics card can even maintain frame rates that are playable to you because what's playable to me may not be playable to the next gamer so you want to make sure that the, your graphics card is going to be able to uh, keep up with your monitor's refresh refresh rate so Again, the G4, the GTX 1660 Super can game at 1440. 
Um, you're anywhere in the, like the high 80s, high 90s. Really depends on the game. But even super graphically demanding games like Assassin's Creed, Odyssey, and even let's go back to like Watch Dogs 2, you're going to be a little lower than that. So you're going to want to either A, play around with your settings, find that balance between refresh rate and graphics, but 75 hertz is a good medium to be in. Because you're a little past 60. You may or may not feel the difference because it's only 15 hertz more, but you're past 60. And even it's in my opinion, <clears throat> you know, synchronized technology like FreeSync and G-Sync, if you're able to be past your monitor's refresh rate, you want to turn those off. But if you know you can't hit your monitor's refresh rate, then you want to turn them on. And that way you'll, you know, reduce screen tearing and get, uh, you know, get better feedback from your mouse and better communication between your monitor and mouse. I see we say Thunder is laughing. <laughs> I'm not sure what's funny. Um, Q says never use a panel with high refresh rate than 60. It's a, it's a, a great jump. I went from 60 to 100, like I mentioned earlier, and I was just like. Wow, what you know? What have I been missing? And I have been exploring the idea once I upgrade my gaming rig to even bump up to like a hundred and forty-four hertz, twenty-five sixty by fourteen forty p panel, to say you know just level up my personal gaming experience. Mr. Zombie says you're missing out, cute. Yeah, um, excuse me, take a drink. There you go. Got to wet the whistle a little bit. The Mr. Zombie 5 says, you're missing out, Q. You know, if you can level up from a 60 hertz panel, it is an amazing experience. It really does add to the overall feel of the games you play. And even for single player games. Like, it, it's just opened me up once I've played The Witcher 3 on this monitor. It just made the action and everything just felt so smooth. So, so just lifelike and move it was it was great i highly recommend it but if you look at this let me look at this price here this 1440p monitor 219 dollars and it's an ips monitor so you get the benefits of an ips panel as you can see here the goal is high that's 489 dollars that quad hd resolution 144 hertz this is what i've been wanting to maybe i guess you could say it's an upgrade right yeah i'm dropping i'm losing a few pixels but I'd be getting a much higher refresh rate, which is what I'm thinking about going once I either get a 3070 or, you know, the upcoming bit or a big Navi GPU to take advantage. To get a GPU that can really power this resolution and be somewhere in between 120 to 144 hertz. Yeah, yeah. Walter says eBay. Q says, all my money goes to college. I'll eventually experience it. Yeah, the, absolutely no rush. Uh, your education certainly takes precedence and, and or priority. Um, and those monitors aren't going anywhere, but it really could give you a, just a, just level up your gaming experience and just, you would, you would have a uh, much smoother experience. That's at least, that was how, I first experienced it, so many experiences, but that's how I first experienced it. My game just fell smoother, and I had tested, I was playing Wolfenstein on a 60 hertz monitor, and then I tried it at 1440p, 100 hertz, and just jumping, that 40 hertz difference just was like, whoa, it took some getting used to, it really did. I, I expect the same thing's gonna be once I jump up to 144 hertz, but eBay is certainly a good option, especially if you're comfortable, you know, with, but with going that route, with buying, you know, buying a used panel, but Altogether, depending on, regardless of the resolution you go for, whether that's 1080p or 1440p, you can tack on, on top of this $1,000 cost for this system, right? This Again, this is the build it now. This is the build it now price at, you know, between 1000 to 1400 to 1500 with, with your monitor included. But this is the buy it now. This isn't I want to wait. This is, well, I want a system that I can game on right now. The Q says, or Walter G, I'm sorry, Walter says, what are your thoughts on this monitor? AOC, AOC C27G1, 27 inch curved frameless. I haven't looked at it. I have to take a look at it, which I don't know if, 
I don't know if that if that came across here, if it was at uh if it was at Micro Center. But those frameless monitors are really great, especially if you're running if you're going to go with a dual monitor solution. Um I have to check it out. AOC has came up on I'm trying to see if Micro Center here has it listed. But AOC has came up with their monitor game and before I decided on this MSI monitor, AOC is what is actually one of the monitors I was looking at, but I wanted a slightly uh a slightly more vertical panel. So I went with the thirty four inch thirty four forty by fourteen forty P monitor. But um yeah, AOC makes great budget conscious monitors and this this monitor at three nineteen still even puts you in that you know fourteen hundred dollar price range between your system so if you had the funds if you had the capital fourteen hundred right now and you want to either upgrade from a previous system which if you're comfortable with selling your stuff i can't recommend you do that enough sell your stuff like sell your parts recoup some of your costs back or you know maybe you can donate it to a mate or a friend of yours right to help them get, you know, even if they can't afford a system or they only play on a console, you know, maybe you can donate the platform to a friend of yours and do a whole full system swap or sell some of your some of your components to try to recoup the cost of building a high end system. But something to consider, right? And that's offloading your older stuff. But even at this budget of fourteen hundred dollars, you could you could look at an AOC you know quad hd monitor okay and that's this is a va panel but the maximum resolution 2560 by 1440p that's quad quad hd by the way but one millisecond response time this actually isn't a bad monitor for 319 about a hundred dollars more but it also has slightly bigger than the one we were looking at and it's curved i know some people find a curve crazed to be a facade but i personally like it my monitor is curved too so the extra vertical real estate does help you know it when i'm playing games like the witcher 3 i can just see more you know left to right the aspect ratio is 21 by 9 so i have i have slightly more peripheral on my left and right when playing my games and it does help me out in fortnite like when i'm testing fortnite and when I'm testing Fortnite and I'm not playing on my ultra wide monitor, I'm not as good. But when I'm playing Fortnite on my ultra wide monitor, I'm like slightly better. And that's just because I could see people, you know, I could see players uh, a little bit better than I could on, say, a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitor. Chris says, or Q says, not living in the USA, sadly, secondhand market in my country is not as cheap as you guys have it. I know, again, that that sucks. I don't. I seriously thought that's something that's going to get better anytime soon. But we can all hope that prices will stabilize and the used market will see a future boom. But respectively, yeah, I will admit it's not as great everywhere. And then even here in the states, there's still people that scout and still people that try to get over and sell their sell their components for more. I've turned away from prices and turned away from deals that just was not happening. Um, Chris says, I just bought. I just bought a 1080p VA 160 hertz curved. I'm jumping from 60 hertz IPS. We'll see the difference. Yeah, um, that's a nice refresh rate too. 160 hertz and curved. Um, I'm at, Chris. Do you play? Uh, do you play competitively? Let us know. It's a competitive refresh rate, I'd say. I'd imagine. But yeah, do you play competitively? What kind of games do you play? But you will definitely see the difference. See the difference and feel the difference. Walter says, yeah, that sucks. It totally does, man. My heart goes out to you. I wish, I mean, I just wish they were better for our foreign friends. I really do. It's just not fair. Q says, or Mr. Zombify says, 43-inch 4K with 144 hertz and free seek would be ideal for me. Yeah. Yeah. 4K almost niche, although with the 30 series, that might change. And even RDNA, which AMD showed their benchmarks at 4K. Maybe 4K gaming is going to be more common. But uh, that's a that that is 4K 144 hertz free sync. That is ideal. I would like that too. The uh, the monitor size because I do like, you know, I do like monitor real estate, and I do appreciate the detail in 4K. And obviously, the 144 hertz and free sync would be you know would be great for any game. But 
single player games necessarily don't need them. What uh, Q says this exact build is like fifteen hundred dollars thanks to tax. Wow. Yeah, that that sucks, and it's not a uh, you know it's it's probably not the best solution or alternative, but the way I see it is. If we price a, a bill, say that costs fifteen hundred dollars U.S., it would cost you two. Paying that extra certainly doesn't help that you're paying more, but we're we're still getting the same performance. Like I'm not getting any more or less. But if I threw another if I threw another five hundred dollars on top of this bill, we would be yeah we would be in like twenty series territory, um, while you would be with the sixteen sixty super. But that that the taxes in the uh the the extra just the over the government overhead it definitely sucks um q says yeah they're moving to germany just to live in a country with stable second hand market german and while this is germany is a nice place to live i enjoyed it wow that's i've never i've never been but i've talked to people that live there and my wife's family is descended from germany um awesome that, uh, thanks for sharing the water and q but on the subject of budget and total price here this system between a thousand to four hundred dollars you might as well say for a decent either quad hd uh monitor or a full hd monitor a 1080p monitor you want to throw a flex of at least four hundred dollars in there for your high-end system that's also including you know i say 15 because the, it all depends on your mouse and you know any other peripherals you may want say you want a gaming headset and you know you want wired or you got a specific brand you like to go with and the same if you want to keep all your peripherals universal <clears throat> and use like a, a a corsair mechanical keyboard and like a uh, a corsair mouse and has a, and you want to keep it universal that really going to depend on you on your preference right but just all of us we should when we're building we factor that into our costs i don't because i have keyboards laying around but <clears throat> if you're coming into it and you don't have a keyboard and mouse or you don't even care about like rgb and mechanical or membrane and you just want to just jump in and go you just get any any keyboard will do you can go to you know walmart or something like that chris says some cod and cs go okay uh, is that warzone cod I know the the uh, Black Ops beta released. I meant to I meant to benchmark it, which I still might. You might see a pop up video between now and Monday because I wanted to benchmark it at this resolution. And Chris can't wait for Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, and he's a programmer. That's awesome. Um, programming is is uh, very intensive, but I cannot wait for Cyberpunk 2077. Talked about that on last week live stream because it's going to support ray tracing, and I am a fan of ray tracing it really changes the dynamic of the game fam i'm telling y'all like the metro metro x is playing that with ray tracing i think with rtx on and i believe it was at high settings just being in some unlit areas where the the scene of the game was being you know lit by by real-time light sources rather that was a candle or like some type of glowing mushroom or radiation and you would it was so amazing and it changed the dynamics of the game once you enter dark areas but ray tracing is is really nice technology and i'm all for it i hope amd succeeds with their you know with, with their hardware accelerates based training but with with your budget to keep it simple let's say at fourteen hundred dollars with our monitor that's base system base monitor four hundred dollars or fourteen hundred dollars rather that's 1080p or 1440p or even 4k you can hang somewhere around there just factor that in for your cost but let's say you wanted to upgrade this system what's a possible upgrade path you could take and i see q says chris which college are you studying at yeah uh, let us know let us know chris tell us in the chat um yeah an upgrade path you can take and here's here's where things get interesting here's because here's what I recommend, right? The good, better, best model, as my friend Dale from self -publish, self publishing with Dale would say. You can expect to want to upgrade with at least half 
of your initial cost. For us, this system was $1,400 with the monitor. Let's say you already have your keyboard. Let's say for the uh, for the sake of simplicity, we'll say you already have your keyboard, your mouse. You know, you're all set up. You're just waiting for that Amazon blue van to gently either deliver your parts, or let's say you had it build, you know, by a uh, with it with a company, which is fine too. If here's what I say about that: if you're uncomfortable with building, at least be fam familiarize yourself with the building process. I can't recommend that enough. Even if you're uncomfortable with building, you should still have some understanding of what all goes into the process with a custom build, with a build that starts as nothing but pieces and is configured into this one beautiful package of just uh, of just transistors and graphics and everything else and cores, and you just get this complete package. Familiarize yourself with the build pro with the uh, with the build process. Two reasons, in my opinion, why you want to do that. One, in case something goes wrong, you understand how to troubleshoot it yourself, and you don't have to, you know, pick up your computer, detach, transport it to like a micro center, which is okay too, if that's something you want to do. But to save yourself a lot of time, headache, and you know, just unnecessary money, possibly even, because that's going to cost you. Familiarize yourself with the build process, so you can understand how to troubleshoot any issues you may run into. And B, that is. If you if you didn't build it yourself, but you still want to make these upgrades and you want to slowly get yourself comfortable to working with parts, you you can prepare yourself for the inevitability of a future upgrade. But for us, we're starting at we started at fourteen hundred dollars for our system and our monitor. Let's say that monitor will be because I'm a fan of fourteen forty p. Right. Let's go with this Asus ROG Strix, the XG thirty two VQ. 144 hertz I believe it's 21 by 9 aspect ratio but either way 144 hertz so this monitor is going to be great for even competitive games but let's say for the sake of simplicity we will keep it at 1400 Q says I'll, I'd go with more storage maybe a second M.2 absolutely because Games are taking up more space more now than ever. Games like Call of Duty Modern, you know, Warzone and Fortnite, they're just getting bigger and bigger. And speaking of saving time, you don't want to have to keep like uninstalling and installing your games, but you certainly could add another, you know, M.2 or another just standard SSD, right? Another one terabyte SSD. But one, here's where I would start. With this system, because Ryzen 5000 is right around the corner, the 5600X costs right now $299 when it launches on November 5th. It's due to cost $299. There is a rumor that AMD, we mentioned this earlier, will ship a 5600, which will cost a little less than the 5600X. We've seen this in, you know, Zen and Zen Plus and Zen 2. Okay, we've seen this, but if we were to upgrade, in my opinion, is what I recommend. You start with half the cost of your system. I may have repeated myself, but you want to start with half the cost of your system. In this case, this cost us fourteen hundred dollars. Whatever we upgrade to, we want to make sure that we're that we're going to be able to get the most or to get more out of our monitor and by getting more of our monitor for a monitor with this with this asus raw strix the 144 hertz this the eight the uh 1660 super the graphics card we went with no it's not going to be in this neighborhood like even if you know you maybe have to even lower the settings dramatically to be over 100 but you know you may or may not need free sync depending if tearing depending on screen tearing is an issue you may or may not need FreeSync, but excuse me to take advantage of this 144 hertz panel, I start with upgrading the CPU and upgrading the GPU. Now there's two ways you can go about doing that because again, with the Ryzen 5, the 5600X, that 19% IPC uplift, 
would be worth the what hundred dollar upgrade at that point so yeah the cpu cost 299 dollars but the upgrade you know you're looking at more ipc uh same lower power draw because that's 65 watts higher overclocks right and just overall performance in gaming on average i believe amd has toting 26 percent compared to previous generation i'd start with the cpu and the gpu hands down now with the gpu there's something to pay attention to over the next three months with big navi with our dna2 series gpus coming out and with you know nvidia's with nvidia dangling the rtx 3070 over our heads before there were rumors of a 3070 ti and a 3060 and a 3060 ti nvidia likely has all of these you know literal gpus on deck ready to steal amd's thunder how they will be priced depends on the performance we can expect and we also can expect to potentially see super series 30 series cards either way you slice it you can expect either to upgrade to that for you know with the rdna2 going with a middle of the way 6000 series graphics card like similar to what the 570 was or the 580 was for gamers but you're going to want to upgrade your gpu and you're going to want to try to find a way to divide the half that cost to upgrading your cpu to either get like um i believe it was christoph or q mentioned yeah q mentioned in the chat going with more storage ask yourself is that a bottleneck you've run into do you find yourself having to uninstall and re down reinstall your games more commonly because you're playing more games and you just you know you have more time to play games that's something to consider as well or is your bottleneck your your graphics card not being able to keep up with your monitor your cpu is going to be fine it's going to be a fine cpu for a while you know the, the 3600 is going to be relevant for months to come possibly even years so this is this is nothing to you know this is nothing to ignore also with the prospect of being able to flip it on the used market and recouping some of your cost back. That's something we talked about too, both the graphics card and the CPU. That half upgrade may not cost you that much if you're able to recoup some of these costs back from flipping your hardware on eBay or locally. If you're on Facebook, list your, list your items on the Facebook marketplace. I'd imagine a 3600, even for somebody who was looking to make an upgrade from say a 1600X would be interested in it. Somebody still on the X470 chipset because uh, because AMD has announced that, or not AMD, I'm sorry, Asus, and I mentioned this earlier, we, we won't see uh, Zen 3 BIOS updates for their 400 series chipsets. And even then, AMD also said those BIOS updates won't roll out until January of 2021. I mentioned this in my video. I believe that's because AMD is supporting their motherboard manufacturers and they want them to, you know, sell their 500 series chipset stock. If you make if you make those the 400 series chipset motherboards compatible most people won't really upgrade their motherboard and buy a new motherboard although it's crazy to believe if you'd want a zen 3 cpu on a 400 series chipset you won't be able to take advantage of pcie 4.0 that's the reason why we went with the b550 we don't have to upgrade our motherboard so although we bought now that's money we saved by going by future future proofing if you will future proofing our motherboard decision with the with the 500 series chipset six months if you do want to upgrade to a 5600 and we're still getting that 19 percent uplift 19 percent ipc uplift and the 5600 is going to cost us like 249 even better you saved yourself 49 dollars and you're getting a huge upgrade a huge 19 percent i mean it translates to double digit frames but same thing with your graphics card a 249 Rather, if you can swing, say, you know, if NVIDIA, which I believe they will, we don't have anything lower than a 3070. That's definitely going to change, I believe. 
And so you could see yourself in like a category of three, $350 graphics card, say like a 3050 or a 3060 at $350 would be a great pair and would be a great update, uh, upgrade. As I'd imagine those GPUs will come with eight gigabytes of VRAM. I really do. And I do believe that they're going to come. NVIDIA has left a huge void with their lower end stuff, which is giving us to start the 3080 and 3090 and then 3070 is coming later this month but you know what about the 3050 or we had 1050 ti's and 750 ti's then we had like the 1650 super and the 1660 ti and the super series between those two variants but what about the 3050 ti what about the, a 3060 the nvidia has been you know mute on those graphics cards on those gpus but we know they're coming they're not going to leave that market segment to AMD's Radeon division to step in with their upcoming shiny new RDNA 2 GPUs and just let them continue, let AMD continue to take market share from Intel. And then, yeah, NVIDIA doesn't want them to take their market share either. Go, let's jump into the chat. And I see uh, Walter says, or I'm sorry, Chris says, the Maritime University of, of Stenton. I know I'm maybe butchering that. Um, that's, his, that's his college. Walter says, to keep cost down, I will go with a half terabyte storage and just use a CPU cooler included with the CPU and get a less expensive case, put my money in PSU, memory, and motherboard. Absolutely. There are, you could, you could probably get a, you could probably save like 30 to $40 by changing the case alone. Again, I went with this case because cosmetically I find it appealing. Um, and for a high end, again, for a high end build. For a high-end build, $120 isn't all that really expensive for a case. We jump in. Let's see. Let's jump in and take a look at alternatives. Right? The 500 series NZXTs. It's $70. Not a bad case. Not a bad case at all. Not a bad case at all. And same thing with the you know, Fractal. The Fractal makes awesome cases, by the way. And even still, there are, I've seen cases on the used market left and right so even with your case shipping is normally never uh, a good idea to buy a case with the term because you're going to pay so much for shipping it's going to make the you know the deal kind of kind of null and void or, or just kind of mute and then you see you have other options but it just really depends on you know your preference as a case do you like a black case do you like a white case do you want you know a little bit more features do you want a panel some people some gamers don't even really care about having a window but even this $60 case I was looking at the other day the Corsair Carbite isn't that bad right I mean it has a it has a side panel window I can imagine <laughs> the airflow may not be all that great because it's completely closed off here but uh you know depending on what you're putting inside you may still see respectable GPU temperatures obviously they'd be within spec regardless of not having good airflow here. And even then you could just take the panel off and just be aware of possible dust getting into your system. But, you know, depending on your preference, you have, you could lower your cost in your case. This P300 here, this is the case I'm actually upgrading my, I'm upgrading my kids' PC from, in this case here. This is the P300 to P400. But it's fifty four dollars. You could you're saving like you know close to sixty bucks alone right there, which could go to a, a another SSD for sure. And uh, Walter says, yeah, then you can upgrade your CPU and your GPU in the future. Q says looks nice. Oh, his college says looks nice. It's very close to Germany. Mr. Zombify says having an upgrade path is a huge thing. It absolutely is, and you have an upgrade path on Intel, depending on the chipset, especially with 10th generation. You know, but it, that upgrade path is just so much more, uh, much more expensive. You have to ask yourself, is that upgrade path cost effective on Intel? What AMD has done on the AM4 socket with that is really, really interesting. I hope it's something AMD or Intel is paying attention to, and that's backwards compatibility. I do think AM4 will get its official send off at Zen 4. Maybe we'll see the AM5 socket, right? 
And I really think after that, though, the M4 side, they've it's lasted through what three Zen, Zen Plus, Zen Two, and now Zen Four, four CPU generations. That's amazing. Normally, we only get two with Intel. Normally, like their previous generation and the current generation are compatible with one another. For example, sixth and seventh gen, eighth and ninth gen, and this is why we believe 400 series uh, motherboards will be compatible with 11th gen. We'll likely see like 400 series and 500 series chipset and 10th uh, gen and 11th gen will be compatible so yeah having an upgrade path definitely is a, it's huge man you can really save money down the road it's the closest thing to future proofing your system you can do in, in my honest opinion and chris says yes my hometown is 30 kilometers from the border uh i guess in, in his local native i'm gonna butcher that chris i'm so sorry i cost not adra Sorry if I butchered that, but I just wanted to get, try to get an A for effort. Um, Trine, Trine says, uh, and I think we've met on a live stream before. I think it's been a while. Trine says, hey, hey man, can you check my PC build specs? Sure, uh, share them with us. Share them with us, Trine. Share us with this in the chat. I'd love to give you some feedback on it. On a side note. Let me not forget where we are. Let me jump back here. But on a side note, it's part of an upcoming series I want to do where we're going to go live twice a week. Okay. Either before we're going to start this either before the, before the new year or end the new year. But I want to do a series where, you know, you guys from the community send me pictures of your rigs and I give you live feedback on your system, some upgrades, some changes you can make. Um, we just overall just have fun, right? But, but yeah, try and share your share your specs with us in the chat. Let me jump back here and scroll up, make sure I didn't miss anybody. Chris says I will go with the X570 for future 2x M.2 NVMe could be worth it. Absolutely, it's going to be one of the biggest benefits to PCIe 4.0, and that is fast read and writes on your PCIe lanes with say an with an M.2. Definitely go with the X570 chipset. If you don't have an AM4 socket motherboard and you're looking to upgrade from, you know, if you're on like an A320 or a B350 and you're ready to upgrade your CPU, do upgrade your motherboard at the same time. It's very it's something I strongly, strongly consider. And if you do have, say, like a B350 motherboard or a B450 and X470 motherboard, consider, you know, selling it on the used market. A few side tips. If you are going to do that, include, you know, pictures of your pins. And if you can, um, excuse me, pictures of the system in working order. So like a snapshot of the BIOS with the timestamp, if you can. That's going to help you sell your parts much, much faster and help you recuperate some of those upgrade costs, right? But, uh, but yeah, definitely go with the X570 chipset. And... Walter says, agree 100% with Christoph. Yep. Q says, I only went to Gondusk, Gondusk for the war museum and some memorials. Talking about exploring Germany, which I imagine has so much history. It'd be a fascinating place to visit. Q says, maybe two NVMEs M.2 for RAID 0. Absolutely. RAID 0, 100%. There is so much to, there's so much to see in Poland. I like, he's talking about some of the areas out there in Poland. And the Mrs. Amify says, we need AMD to step up to keep nvidia and intel in check absolutely we really do and this is why i wanted to give amd like my money like come on do it i know it's going to go to research and development and just you know paying staff and what have you do it amd is there do and here's my thing i want to i'll admit with amd because amd most people don't really talk about this and if they do maybe i miss it but amd is fighting a war on two fronts nvidia Nvidia's only like true GPU competition is AMD Radeon. Other than that, Nvidia has monopolized the graphics department. Intel was like trickling in, and then things changed, and then now their GPUs have gone silent. Their XE GPUs, right? will they come or will they not? Remains to be seen. But AMD has a war on two fronts to fight. They have to be competitive in the GPU market, and they have to be competitive in the CPU market. So I do give AMD the benefit of the doubt that, unlike Intel, you know there are no there are no other major CPU 
manufacturers other than AMD. And then like like NVIDIA, there are no other major GPU manufacturers, you know, other than Radeon, which is now a division of AMD. So AMD has to be competitive in both CPUs and GPUs. And it's amazing with, you know, being now they're being guided by Dr. Lisa Su that she has brought that company from the brinks of bankruptcy and have made AMD not only competitive, super competitive in the microarchitecture and just CPU market with not just consumer based CPUs, but also industry based, you know, CPUs for server centers and their uh, Rome CPUs and even Threadripper CPUs. They've they've been managed. He's brought them to this point of a competitive state. And I sincerely believe, like you said, uh, Mr. Zombified, that they're going to come in and now they're getting ready to put NVIDIA in check. I'm all for, you know, I am I, I am not a fanboy of either of the two. I will respect the things that are great. And AMD right now, they're offering some really good price to performance with their CPUs and they are doing it. I really would like to see them do the same with their Radeon with their Radeon division. I know they I know they can, but again, AMD is fighting this this two front war. They have on with their CPU and with their CPU division and CPU R and D, they have Intel to compete with. And then with their GPU they have Nvidia to de- deal with. AMD is almost the small guy, if you will. When you when you realize Nvidia has no direct competition and Intel has no direct competition, but AMD has competition between them both. So their R and D it has to be, you know, unilaterally uh balance between both both divisions and to be competitive in both markets and they haven't really been competitive in their gpu market 5700 xt and and the 5500 xt were were great until the super series came and that's the and and that's what i'm saying like amd you know they're they're battling intel and single core performance and the core wars are here again and now you know, here they're coming with our DNA too, and and most importantly, check this right, real time ray tracing. This is how a hey, Mrs. Zombify and and everybody here on the chat, Mrs. Zombify bought it up. But let me say it like this: This is how I think AMD is going to get serious with, you know, their with their graphics with their graphics division because we are get they are ready to compete with Nvidia all the way down to hardware hardware accelerated ray tracing. So I think this is the time. Walter says, yep, absolutely. Q says, some people are really nice. He's talking about Poland. Other than that, beautiful country and people. That's awesome. The world needs more of that. Needs more both, you know, just the countries and people to just come together and just love and harmony and peace. Walter says, agree. AMD has to keep the pressure on. Yep, everything like I just mentioned, AMD has to keep, you know, keep the pressure on, fight this, fight this, dual front war that they find themselves in having to be competitive with nvidia having to be competitive with intel both these both these companies have buku capital in terms of r d they have money to spend to be better than amd while amd has to divide their resources and time to be competitive on both fronts yep and we, and, and yeah, we're all in agreements and i see we have rtx rtx slash on speaking of radiation race tracing is in the house Fellow, uh, fellow uh, member of the Facebook group, and I believe, and it's good to see you here on a live stream with us. Chris says the Polish people are a characteristic. One of that is we always say what we think, and that can make tension. I can see how that could be problematic for most people who aren't used to it. But me personally, I tend to respect more people that are upfront and you know say what they really want to say like it won't offend me it won't harm me i will appreciate you better if you just like keep it a hundred as we say from the jump like you know don't don't try to just you know just just be up front and chris says not like in the u.s if someone is asking how are you we are going to say i'm mad if i'm in truth and or i'm sad i'm sorry i read that wrong i'm sad and that's uh that i mean that's something just not in the U.S., just people, humans all together. Just, just if somebody asks you how you're doing, if if it's not good, say, ah, I'm not good. Most of the time, people say, if they either ask me how you're doing, I say I'm alive, it's better to be in dead, which is true. Everybody has something going on in the world, but, um, you know, everything isn't, 
everything isn't always sunshine and rainbows. You got to take the good with the bad, right? Chris, uh, Q says, I'm not American, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. RTX One says, what do you think about the rumor of NVIDIA using TSMC shortly in the future? I know I'll go for those before Samsung. Absolutely. And before I answer that question, RTX One, try it. I saw you can't link the list. It's all good. Just tell me your base systems. You know, tell me your base system spec sheet. Like, what's your chipset? You know, your motherboard, CPU, and GPU, RAM amount, etc. Um, the core parts, the core parts, the things we need to know the most: CPU, GPU, motherboard, RAM. Um, tell us that. Just type it to us in the chat, uh, Tron. Tron. But RTX on. So Nvidia switching to TSMC. Um, I think that spells the uh, a super refresh or um, an ampere refresh on a smaller node because Nvidia is switching to TSMC. And um, I would go for those two before Samsung, honestly. And most people didn't, I know and Nvidia did this a little after, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I am, I'm, I'm very sure. Nvidia announced this a little after Ampere came, that they were switching to TSMC. Most people like yourself, R, um, RTX One, would have noticed like, "Whoa, hey, we we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get likely smaller nodes now, better than Samsung's." So, I think that this it won't be for Nvidia's next GPU. I think they'll try to refresh the node on whatever um, the next series, you know, four thousand series, if you will. But yeah, I I found that surprising that they announced it so soon. That definitely tells me that we're going to um, see refresh 30 series cards here rather sooner than later with that switch coming, like you said, shortly in the future. Um, I, I do need to do more homework on it. I will honestly admit, but with the article I read kind of confirmed some of the other ones I was reading at the time that NVIDIA with this switch to TSMC is looking to refresh a 30 series for better power games because the power draw, the 3080 and the 3090 are great graphics cards, but the power draw is high. And Tron says, yeah, oops, I can't link the list. That's okay. Don't worry about linking it. Um, just tell us and just type it in the chat for us. And RTX one says, I'm just, pre I'm just pretty sure the days of GPU overclocking are dying. I uh, even as a as a fan of overclocking, but as a fan of overclocking, that's that could definitely be the case because GPUs are just boosting on their own pretty high, and they're pretty much coming heavily overclocked already from the manufacturer, and uh, you know, th much like much like uh, PPO on Ryzen is making overclocking not as much not needed as much where you're going to get better you know latency with a lower latency with doing a manual overclock bad habit says so will amd be able to compete with nvidia i mean that that's really it's really hard to predict will they be able to compete with nvidia i think they will be competitive if that makes sense. I don't think they'll release a graphics card that's faster than the 3080, but I think it would be very close or within margin and will cost significantly less and will also uh, be available. In my honest opinion, this is in my opinion, if AMD can just have their graphics cards, if they can maintain their supply, uh, they stand to be seen that these graphics cards, even though they may not be faster than NVIDIA's offering, if they're available, that's what's going to matter the most to gamers is availability. That, uh, RTX One says, Navi TSMC 7 nanometer don't overclock well either. No, it does not. That's a good, very good point because no, it does not. Um, yeah, it, it almost didn't make sense to overclock Navi at all. Like, I watched that with the much bigger tech tubers. Um, with them over, and it's one of the reasons why I didn't really test the 5700 XT. I'm like, ah, there's just like almost the overclocking headroom is not existence. It's already pretty much overclocked as far as it can go from the factory. But you're right. It, it, no, it did not overclock well at all. And Bad Habit says, speaking of overclock, they say, they say I, I never overclock, never had the use for it. And I, I understand, you know, it's not for everybody. I like the, uh, the risk versus reward. I'm an amateur gambler. I just like the idea of, 
the sil it's the silicone lottery like you're playing the silicone lottery and that's where i i get you know the fun that's where i get fun and enjoyment from it um overclocking my c overclocking cpus i find to be more challenging but also more fun you, you normally get better gains when overclocking your cpu than your gpu anyway for example over my 8700k is overclocked at 5 gigahertz and my render times are like 25 percent faster than just letting the cores uh turbo all on their own and tron says case is a lian lee Li dynamic intel core oh 10900k so that's a 20 10, 10 core 20 thread cpu and cpu cooler of course, a Hydro Series 150i Pro, RAM 3200 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes DDR4, 4000 megahertz, and a Z490 Maximus Hero 7. Um, I mean, that's a fan. I mean, that's a brilliant. That's a brilliant system. That's a very high-end system. That CPU, starting at about 600, and that's a 649 dollar CPU, and 32 gigabyte kit of DDR4. Certainly expensive, but I mean that system on the high end side is great for especially for content creator content creation and gaming just even if you're not creating gaming uh i believe the 10900k is what nvidia tested did their did their 30 series benchmarks on so by definition it's still very much as the fastest you know gaming cpu you could possibly buy right now it very much is the is is expensive but I wanted to get my hands on the one overclock one, but I said I'd be comfortable with overclocking like a 9900K. I just don't need the extra two cores and four threads right now. I um, I I did a uh, I did a test on you know saying how much could I gain from bumping up to 10th gen, and it and it really the cost to upgrade just wasn't necessary. Mrs. Amify says RTX or on NVIDIA's GPU G, NVIDIA's GPU yields are showing that they screwed up big time going with Samsung. This could be very true. And Tron says is MSI G4 and his, the graphics card is a is it a, a GeForce 3090. Okay, so yeah, I mean that's a, a very high end top of the line system. Q says I have to overclock my 1050 ti to play borderlands 3 over 60 fps and in, and there's an example where overclocking can help um get you some you know get some get some decent gains a 2080 ti i wish i would have did it on camera but i overclocked my 2080 ti and was able to get like plus 150 on the core and in the 1650 super video we reviewed you can check that on my channel. I believe it's down in the basement below. The basement is a description box, but you can give that video, check that video out because we overclocked the 1650 Super and I was able to get it to like plus 2150 megahertz, 2.1 gigahertz on the core. And I mean, it was quiet, the temperatures, everything was in check. It really was. And we got, you know, marginal, marginal improvements with that overclock. Trying says not sure about bottlenecks, so need help on this patch together. With a 3090, if you play at 1080p, trying, I'm going to say you uh, you're maximizing the, the high refresh rates. You probably will see a bottleneck even at that resolution, but a bottleneck meaning not in a bad way. You'll still see high GPU utilization, but you you'll get you know high frame rates, and even at 1440p, there's certainly no bottleneck. RTX one says, "Yeah, absolutely agreeing with the Mr. Zomb. I agree too on the go with them going with Samsung, and this is why they switched to TSMC and why we're going to see 30 series cards." And Tron says, "We don't play VAT taxes here where I live, so I get heavy discounts, which works out. But I may nitpick to on compatibility. Well, tell us where you're located um, from, Tron. Uh, share, you know, share, share, share your region with us." And RTX. On says 9900k at 4.1 all core is my sweet spot. Absol absolutely, that's what I would want to accomplish as well on a 9900k. Also, simply because my RT uh, my uh, 8700k I could do 5.1 all core. Again, it's at you know temperatures on on this 240 millimeter AIO is somewhere north of mid 90s, 90 95, right? Depending on the ambient um, ambient room temperature. Which is still very much within spec, but uncomfortable, you know, for long-term uses. But 
you know, if I can get a 9900K at 5.1 gigahertz, even at 5.2 on a closed loop, that'd be amazing for just rendering out video. And even here, when I switch up to say uh, 4K, because in, in 2021, one of the biggest channel changes coming, and we're gonna talk about this on a new Gears Eve live stream. So if you're here now watching, and you're still with the lab fam, in December, my, my birthday's in December, New Year's Eve, so, you know, we're going to do a live, a New Year's Eve live stream. We're just going to talk about the, you know, some things coming up in the future for this channel between interviews and, and collaborations and other things that I have working on in the background. Um, but, you know, if I could, if switching the content creation up to 4K might need the extra cores. Absolutely. And to have a 9900K at 5.1 or even 5.2 would be nice because I know this 8700K could do 5.2 gigahertz. I just know it. Trying says they, they are on 1920 by 1080p, but for 240 hertz gaming. So, yeah, you, you're going to – there isn't necessarily a bottleneck. You may want to try to push most of the load on the graphics card just so the graphics card can simply render more frames. But even at 1080p, from, from uh, looking at the benchmarks myself, a 10900K is possibly the CPU you want to pair with an RTX 3090, but the 5950X and even the 5900 could change that because the 5900X costs uh, $549. So that's still lower than a 10900K. And Trine says they're from Gear. I'm going to butchers. I've been on the butcher block, and I'm gonna apologize now for ruining the uh, you know the the names of you guys' region, but. Um, I'm going to say that's Gear Gearnessy, the Channel Islands. That's dope. Got an Islander. Okay. RTX on says I've noticed better 1% loads since moving over from the 8700K. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if the uh, you know the two extra cores and four more threads helps you know reduce stuttering, right? And maintain higher 1% loads. 1% loads aren't talked about enough. I almost always try to include them in my benchmarks when applicable where if i if the uh if the game supports msi afterburner and i can capture the minimums of one percent lows i do like to try to share those just so gamers can kind of see um you know what to what to expect and walter says enjoy the chat guys got a balanced piece absolutely walter thanks for hanging out i do appreciate you being here be sure to look out for next saturday's live stream i normally try to get them scheduled out by like monday or tuesday and RTX on says, with my Noctua NHD15 on a 30-minute Intel burning, my top temp was 86 degrees C, which leveled to mid-70s. I'm loving my Noctua. Now, Noctua makes fantastic air coolers. Like, if you weren't going with an AIO or even a single 120 millimeter, go with the Noctua fan. And even if you aren't a fan of their, no pun intended, but even if you aren't a fan of their brown-style coolers, they have, you know... the they have multiple colors now, black, gray, and then you can even paint the fans to match the aesthetic of your build. But yeah, like the Mr. Zomified noted, and Tron, Tron's laughing at my butcher. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I do apologize. But uh, Mr. Zomified says, yeah, agrees with RTX or Noctua makes great stuff. They really do. They really do with their fans. Um, just, just amazing, amazing cooling solutions. But... Jumping, jumping back to the conversation at its core, and that's upgrading. And like many, many, uh, many people here in the chat have even given some good suggestions on what to upgrade. One of them was expanding your storage. Absolutely, games are getting heavier and heavier, right? They're getting heavier and heavier, especially with their, you know, upgrades and patches and DLCs and what have you. So to save yourself the time and headache and frustration of having to reinstall or download games. You know, if you know you play a core five, you could get away with a single solution. But if you want to slowly start expanding your library, you may want to consider adding an additional, you know, storage solution like another M.2 or even another standard SSD to even save a little bit more money. If you just want to, if you don't want to wait, remember the idea, the objective, the objective of this live stream is we don't want to wait. We we want it right now. Like that JG, if you're old school, hey, remember that JG Winworth commercial? Like we we want it right now. If you need more storage right now, 
and you can afford to upgrade, go for what you can afford, even if it's 40 bucks, 50 bucks, or you say, no, I know I can, I'll get another $30 next week. If you know, you're, you're, nobody knows your financial solution or your financial situation, I'm sorry, better than you. So, you know, you go with what you, what, with what you can afford. And RTX on it, RTX on it says it beat my old Corsair H100i, 240 millimeter AIO. Wow, that's interesting. That's actually that's what I use for my 8700K. What was the what was the temperature differences? I'm curious. Here, where I use my 8700K in this part of the lab, um, it gets hot in here, so ambient temperatures do increase. Rather, that's in the summertime or in the wintertime here. In the wintertime, I leave the window open. And it still gets a little toasty, but um, yeah, I'm curious to know what was the the difference in temperatures between the H100i. Was it the V1 or the V2? I'm using the V2. Tricion says unrelated question, but what is the topic of your next vid about? I mean, that's a good question, Ivan. And for Monday's vlog, I haven't like there's no, with our vlogs, there's no focus topic unless it's around you know relevant news so the last past couple of weeks it was you know the arrival of zen 3 um while not relative to this live stream per se i did want to talk more about you know the possibility of amd and motherboard manufacturers drumming up some form of plan obsolescence if you will by making 400 series chipset uh you gamers wait for the BIOS update in January. And it's not that far, it's three months, but there's still no guarantees. And Asus has come out and mentioned that they won't be releasing BIOS updates for their 400 series chipset. And I'm wondering if that's going to become a common theme. So, but for uh, really the most, the, the next theme, excuse me, or the next topic for the next vlog will be, you know, the cost effective price to perform use price to performance upgrade from say a third generation or fourth generation or even a seventh generation i5 or i7 and if you don't have you know a large budget and you're comfortable with going use i'm going to show you the performance differences you can expect with with in that price category or that price point still a lot of other details to hash out about it but we in the next one will be uh very build focused some of the earlier some of the earlier work we've done here tricion i know you're a uh, a long time viewer under you know under a thousand subscribers i think under 500 subscribers we're growing now, and if I hate to get this shameless plug in, but I see we have a few new people join us. And and so if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, you know, hopefully during this live stream, I've been entertaining or helpful and informative enough to have earned your subscription and you join our lab fam community here on YouTube. We're on our way to 2100 subscribers, but um, yeah, try see on more details. I, I'll try to share more details on the community tab as they roll out. And I know you said you, you you haven't been getting the regular notifications. One thing I've told that may work is try to unsubscribe to the channel, but definitely resubscribe. <laughs> but unsubscribe to the channel, resubscribe to the channel with the notification bell on. And let me know if that works. Q says, try it. Is Gersony connected to the UK? That's a good question. Mr. Zami says, are you asking RTX on are you doing push pull it's a good question I know I wanted to do push pull in this system but I didn't the VRMs I didn't have the headroom between the VRM and and the top AIO so I need a bigger case bad habit says oh yeah I need to get another hard drive I only have 500 gigabytes on my new build yeah not a lot of space you might want to because game again games are getting heavier and heavier Mrs. Zombify says, when I take out my old gear, I'm going to use them for a virtual pinball cabinet build. It should be fun. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Definitely, you know, keep us posted. Uh, Mrs. Zombify, if you haven't yet, follow me over on Twitter and, you know, men tag me in, in the build process with that. I'd love to see how, you know, how that comes along and we would maybe even share it here on a live stream with the community. RTX1 says, the difference wasn't huge. They, they are using push-pull. The difference wasn't huge. A few degrees C, but it was consistently beating it. Then you factor in a quieter operation. Yeah, I could. Yeah, no doubt. I could get behind that. And they are using a push pull. Okay, so that's you know one fan on one side, one fan on the other side, and they're knocked to a cooler. 
Try and says we are British, have our own laws, get VAT deducted on all our products from the UK. So basically just just tax avoiding under the flag of Britain. Huh. Very interesting. A little bit of history lesson going on in the chat. Love it. And this is one of my favorite things I like to is, is talking to just different people all over the world. Like it's so amazing to be able to do that in this in this form on a personal level. And if you've just joined the live stream, we're near the middle, if you will, of talking about, you know, should you build a PC now or should you wait? We have a lot of uh, a lot of interesting feedback that was provided to us in the chat here. And Tristan says, well, thanks for telling me the topic. I have been getting some questions of friends asking for help with used parts. Absolutely. And Ivan, you know, wrote, send them my way. Send them my way. I help. I, I help. I help. But I hope I could be helpful to them, answer any questions they may have, or any areas of concerns, help them you know, part out a list just with any, you know, if they have questions on certain system metrics or system performance metrics, if I can, I will make myself available to them. I'm pretty sure there are, you know, other more helpful people, but I try to make myself available to be able to help if and when I can. If I don't have the answers, I will do my best to point you in the, in the right direction. And... We have Mrs. Amify said, yeah, nice. So RTX on setup. They're using a knock tool, push pull, getting some really good temps on an eight core, 16 thread, 9900K. I'm a lord by that CPU. And if used or new, I w I'm likely going to just, you know, hold on to my 8700K, maybe do some 1440p testing with it and big navy stuff and upgrade. You know, stay on the Z390, this, uh, the Maximus Hero Z390 motherboard I'm using. Upgrade the CPU for my editing and gaming rig at a higher resolution. Build in the Mini ITX build a dedicated um, AMD Zen 3 based CPU. That looks like the route we're going in. And remember, we're going to do a build series on it. So get subscribed if you're not already to be able to catch that because it's going to be helpful, educational, and it's going to be entertaining. I have some new equipment that I'm going to test out and a few new just shots and production ideas and designs I want to try in this video. So it's going to be good times and hopefully very helpful and informative to someone who may be interested in building a mini ITX build himself. Q says tax avoiding sounds great. I mean, you know, you save where you can. Absolutely save where you can. Chris says I had a problem with storage, so I took an old PC from the trash, some some C2D on DDR2, bought a large HDD hard drive, installed Linux, and owned cloud software. So I made a self-aware NAS problem solved. And that's something too. I mean, once once we uh, once we get a bigger home, I do want to do a NAS-based system too, um, because repurposing older hardware are great for NAS-based systems, like like you mentioned. Or, I'm sorry, like Chris mentioned just now, um, building a NAS system, which can help you save, you know, on storage as you create your own network. Drinky Crow. Drinky Crow. That's a that's a pretty cool name, Drinky Crow. Drinky Crow says, great show. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, Drinky Show. Thanks for being here. Everybody, thanks, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, and Drinky, Drinky Crow, I'm not sure if we met on a live stream before. If this is your first time, welcome. You know, welcome to the community. Welcome to the show. RTX on says Micro Center has a 900K for 299, and that's funny because let me jump here to my training scene really fast because when at the time, I believe it was last week, I looked, you know, and I was looking at the 900K. It was 364 or 354. It was 364 or 354. And yeah, now it's two ninety nine, three hundred dollars. Wow, that. I mean, wow, wow, that that's interesting. That's interesting. So, even myself with waiting, I could have said, you know, if I'd have bought the t the nine nine hundred K last week, I'd have paid sixty five dollars more. But do note, I would have to drive to this micro center. Micro center does not ship. It's one of the reasons why they're able to price some of their items as low as they as they do you have to go pick it up you do in-store pickup though 
But as you can see here, it's in store only. But that's still a really good price, and that makes me think that maybe users on a 9900K, maybe they'll be ready to to upgrade and be ready to, and by upgrade, they would be upgrading their whole platform. But maybe they'd be ready to upgrade too. So that's not bad at all. Thanks for thanks for pointing that up and bringing that to our attention, RTX on. Man, awesome stuff. And Tryon says to Q, yeah, man, for example, the 3090 was 300 pounds cheaper. Ooh. All about this savings, man. Stay trying to save money. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Like here, going with an 8-core 16-thread um, 9900K for $299. It's about $249 less, or as you can see here, it was $700 when it dropped. But it was about $649, $600. But you get a decent savings. And, tr and Q says to try and over in Turkey that way they pay three hundred dollars more in tax. And I mean taxes, man. Taxes are bang. Taxes and interest, they're bang. And Drinky Cow says, Thank you. You're certainly welcome. Certainly welcome, fam. Certainly welcome. We do this every Saturday, Drinky Crow. Right? Every Saturday, about twelve thirty EST, Eastern Standard Time. With different topics. And as a future warning here soon. I do plan on doing a pop-up live stream, either to stream some Among Us. I had a friend of mine reach out to me wanting to stream some Among Us. I was streaming over on Twitch, which you can follow me on Twitch. It's Inside the Lab show or Inside the Lab streams or Inside the Lab stream. But I also do plan on doing a pop-up live stream here. But we go live every Saturday, Drinky Crow. Trine says, never mind that, bro. <laughs> I think I missed it, Trine, but it's all good. Q says, lucky man. Yeah, for them savings. Tron says is the only Tron says Tron says is the only Q's Tron says the Q the only benefit of living on an island and that and that and taxes a flat rate of twenty percent for wages. That's awesome. And I'm pretty sure you have some pretty, pretty nice views as well, being on an island. I like rain, so you know, I would enjoy, you know, tropical storms and things like that. Although I imagine it's a little 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 carrier on an island, but um, RTX one says 9900K is killer. Could be a stopgap. That's kind of what I'm doing, and I I totally resonate and I totally agree with that. And this is one of the reasons why I'm like, even at 299, I bought my 8700K from a friend of mine here locally that was upgraded to a 9900K, and I got it at a really good deal. And it was with the cooler and uh, the CPU, among other things. But the CPU essentially ended up costing me about $300 to buy if I just separated that, the CPU alone. So the idea that I could upgrade to a 9900K, brand new, $299, is that, that's, a, that's a really good bump in performance. Also, the extra two cores and four threads are certainly welcome as I plan to do more streaming. You know, we want even even here on YouTube, right? We'll likely multi-stream to Twitch and YouTube, but even here on YouTube, not so much as conversational based content like this here, but a little bit of both, a little bit of pop-up live streams, um, on top of helpful and informative content like we're doing here in this live stream. Bad Habit says, so have so they've been they have been waiting, they so have we been overpaying too much money for Intel processors all these years? Well. I I don't I guess yes in a nutshell. Um, overpaying though is subjective. It all depends on if you wanted the best single core performance. If you wanted the fastest possible gaming CPU, you were going to pay for that. I really think Intel did monopolize the um, did monopolize the market by also cutting special deals with certain manufacturers and what have you. But I mean, this is still the United States economy is very still capital capitalist based, and so that that doesn't excuse AMD for their previous you know their previous management or their previous CEO's leadership and where he got them with the FX series. The FX series weren't bad; they just weren't marketed appropriately, in my opinion. But Intel has been charging prices that they knew they could because they knew gamers wanted. The fastest possible gaming CPU. I think we've been overpaying for quad cores, absolutely, because AMD changed the game with Ryzen, with Zen One. We know with OG Zen, they changed the landscape with hyperthreading and just being able to overclock all of their CPUs, non X 
and XCPUs alike were able to be manually overclocked. So, you know, did Intel get over? Uh, do all monopolizing, do all monopolize, monopolized markets, do they all get over? Absolutely. But they charge prices they know they can. Intel now has to shift their mentality. Now Intel can't have that same approach to their marketing and manufacturing of their CPUs. Now they just can't simply charge what they want for the fastest. Now this is AMD taking that reign, allegedly, with their Zen 3 slides and their 19% IPC uplift. That's either going to give them enough to like surpass Intel or be right there at a lower cost. That really remains to be seen. Uh, fast forward down. See, Chris has said, says they have to leave. Thanks for the great time. See you next time. Absolutely. Same bat time, same bat channel. Next Saturday, 1230. Chris, thanks for hanging out with us. I do appreciate it. Drinky Curl says, I'm going to upgrade my old computer in December. Christmas deals. Post my setup in a minute. Yeah, definitely share your specs with us. You know, drop them down here in the chat. Um, RTX on says, speaking of upgrade, one thing nobody ever hardly talks about upgrading, which about... The which about to think you park your behind in four hours, a good chair or a desk. Being comfortable is important. And um, I've been looking at gaming chairs. You know, I think they're comfortable. You know, get one with the good lumbar system that supports your back. If you like me, early, when I was younger, I had like labor intensive jobs or what, when I was in my younger days. So my back is fine, but you know, standing in one position upright, if I don't have good lumbar support, it's not comfortable. And, you know, just leather just feels more premium than some alternatives. But upgrading my gaming chair and being comfortable is definitely important, especially if you game in long, you know, in long sessions, because you're right. When you're on a sofa, it's different than on a computer, like at a desk in, in this environment, in this format, which most most PC gamers do. I understand we do got some sofa, you know, some couch players, but for the most part, we're all at we're all at desks and in gaming chairs. So RTX one is right. You know, setting aside money for a good gaming chair should be a part of your budget, along with your keyboard, monitor, mouse. You know, if you want a fancy mouse pad, like an RGB mouse pad or an extended mouse pad, um, you know, a gaming headset, a gaming stand. All these things are factored into either a what are you going to find comfortable and what you're going to find aesthetically pleasing for your setup. But a good gaming chair is definitely definitely important. Totally agree. And Q says I, I love Instabol and all the C around too too but all the C around is too much. The flax tad is great. Yeah. And Q says I gotta go have a nice stream everybody. Thanks for hanging out Q. It was good seeing you. And Tri says C C is good. We are never ten minutes away from a beach or shop here. Nice easy life good salaries, good good Amazon bargain, especially when buying tech with 20% on Black Friday. That is awesome to hear. It's good to hear some positivity um, around the world, especially with so much negativity here in the States and just everything that's going on here in the States. And then with a the certain, you know, pandemic and everything, but that's good to hear. Drinky Cow hit us with their specs. AMD FX 6300 6-core, six R9 Sapphire, 3 gig by say uh, 270 or 280x one of those I believe 650 watt gold power supply unit that power supply is going to do you good for when you're ready to upgrade for sure and a gigabyte motherboard two SSDs I'm looking for about six to seven hundred dollars I hope to I hope to power 650 gold and SSDs well I, you know the if I if I understood that correctly your your comment correctly your your power supply is going to be more than enough for a platform upgrade, especially if you've been thinking about going Ryzen. Mm. Excuse me, I want to jump to our build here. As you can see, we we've only have an estimated power draw of 300 watts on a Ryzen 5 3600 and a 1660 Super. So, you know, that your power supply is going to be more than enough for, you know, even if you don't go with an AM, you know, don't go with don't call an AM4 socket. Sorry. Um, nice specs, though. Not a bad budget build. Tron says Titan chairs are are the go-to. I have to check them out. Thanks for sharing that, Tron. I've never uh, never heard of them, but 
I'm going to check those out after the live stream. Because I do want to get a good gaming chair. Like, I really do. I don't sit down and game long enough, but just creating content, I do like being comfortable doing that. Because I spend most of my time sitting down just creating content and, and just working on improving the content, which is something I'm working on doing. And I really do appreciate, you know, those of you here on the chat and those of you who are watching on the replay, just your support being here on the live stream, commenting on our videos and our vlogs, liking our videos, uh, sharing our videos. I really do appreciate all of those things. Like it's been an amazing journey for me so far. And I still very much have a whole lot more to learn. And RTX Owen says, that's right. Got to keep the rear end comfy. <laughs> I'm looking at a new one myself. Yes, definitely. You know, got to keep your dairy air comfortable in the chair. And RTX One says the Chan's looking at them and DX Racer as well. Budget offerings, Cougars higher in offerings. Yeah, I, I like to, I'm going to check them both out. I like to check out, you know, the budget options and some of the higher end options as well. And Drinky Cal says that like $700 for a new build. So, you know, you already have storage. I hate assuming, but that's for simplicity's sakes, that's assuming too that you're going to keep your, uh, your case, right? You're going to keep the case, but definitely, you know, you want to keep your power supply unit and your two SSDs so that $700 can go to say, you know, if you're, if you're, if you are, if you aren't interested in, in Zen 3, between Zen 2 and Zen 3 puts you at a comfortable upgrade path between that and a GPU as it's close to half of the system, ha upgrade cost of half of the system we built here today. At about seven hundred dollars, and that's a newer graphics card. Which even coming from, you know, your Sapphire, your R9, any modern graphics card you get here is going to give you huge gains. And I'm not sure if you share. I'm not sure how your the used market is where you're where you're located, but you know that's something to also consider to look at. You could save some money in your cost by looking at the used market for you know a used GPU. And I see you say that you're also be looking for, you're looking for motherboard RAM GPU. Okay. Or motherboard staying on the FX, staying on the AM3 socket, or you know, is that motherboard CPU RAM GPU? Um even either way, on if you go if you switch to Air Force socket, that's seven hundred dollars without needing a power supply unit and SS and storage can could really, you know, put you somewhere along this price category here. If you didn't, let's say you didn't need 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of RAM, right? Say you didn't need 32 gigabytes of RAM. Let's go with 17, same variant, 3600. Oh, lose that. 3600 D megahertz DDR4 CL16 memory. So you figure between between those three, you're still at you know about 300, a little over 300 dollars. Which would give you space to say get a graphics card somewhere in between, uh, you know, the three hundred, four hundred dollar price category. RTX on says, yeah, what about snagging a deal on a used twenty eighty Ti? And they say they need both a CPU, GPU, or RAM. You know, the, the thing with the RTX twenty eighty Ti's, you know, I, I haven't really seen them, you know, going for deals yet. And I really think that th those prices, twenty eighty Ti prices, will drop. Once the 3070 becomes available, but yeah, be on the lookout for 2080 Ti's under $600. That is amazing at that point. You know, it may be a generational generation behind, but at $600 2080 Ti with a, a 3600 or a 3800 with that 11 gigabyte frame buffer, and it's a fast GPU, and you would be able to get high fidelity ray tracing and DLSS 2.0 it's a it's worth it to give it a look it's just in my opinion I imagine 2080 Ti sellers myself included I have one although I wouldn't dare sell mine um, you're gonna have to price it somewhere lower than the 3070 this is why so many people were offloading their 2080 Ti's before you know 30 the 4 to 3080 was available users were selling their 2080 Ti's. It's in my opinion that that wasn't maybe the best choice to make. 
especially if you were looking to get one on day one, we all see how we all saw how that worked out. And now with NVIDIA giving temporary exclusive, you know, distribution rights to Best Buy now for their founders cards, it's kind of like, well, wow. <laughs> so, you know, in between now, because the 3070 is set to come out end of October the 29th, and we're going to see our, more RDNA 2 on the 28th, 2080 Ti users, if you're going to look to sell one, really it's going to be people like yourself, Drinking Crow, who's going to benefit from user selling their 2080 Ti. I really, I really do believe so. And Drinking Crow says, yeah, CPU, GPU, RAM, motherboard. So almost a whole platform switch. And with $700, you have a lot of wiggle room. As you can see here, 3600X, a B550 motherboard, which you can, if you're interested in the enthusiast chipset, the X570 chipset, up your budget a little bit more. But if you're not looking to do, if you don't need enthusiast, uh, you know, enthusiast, and, and enthusiast options on your motherboard, you can go with the B550 chipset. But 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz CL16, and you're looking at what 339, like a 430 dollar price to platform swap, and some wiggle room for graphics card. But again, coming from a Sapphire, you'll you'll uh you'll get really good performance, and you'll be able to probably to play games you haven't been able to play um, here recently. Drinking Crow says, I want to buy today, but I have a Las Vegas trip in two weeks. Sounds like a good time. I mean, you know, hey, listen, the computer parts aren't going nowhere. Vegas, hopefully, isn't going nowhere no time soon. But, um, you know, hey, go ahead. Enjoy yourself. And that way, once you come back, you can build your PC and get all the vacation and hanging out and partying out the way. That way you can sit down and, and play some games, right? RTX one says, yeah, I'm not selling mine either. Even once I upgrade, I'm keeping it. Absolutely. I mean, especially if there's going to be interest in the 2080 Ti, I want to hold on to mine. And that way, you know, potential buyers can come to, to you know, see the performance they can expect with, you know, current update, up, current drivers and what have you once new drivers come out for the 3070, because, you know, they will. And um, paired with 5000 series GPUs. And also, I will say... This is a little bit of future, you know, future tease for content. But I will say that I, when it comes to 1440p, 2080 Ti is, is a great graphics card for 1440p. But hold on to your 2080 Ti because here recently I've been playing around with DLSS and speaking of topics it's a video that i do want to do to much like we did the minecraft video where we talked about rtx before you know most rtx games that came out i believe metro exodus at the time was one of the front-running rtx games that and shadow of the tomb raider and both games supported dlss and eventually i could be wrong but i'm not sure if it did at launch it certainly didn't at the game's launch but I want to test DLSS a little bit more. It's not as fuzzy as it was DLSS 1.0 was. It's just nowhere near. And so I tested DLSS on Fortnite, which now supports you know ray tracing and DLSS. And I also test DLSS on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I did in Fortnite with DLSS on at 4K, mind you, at 4K high settings or ultra settings for both games. I did see like a 25 to 30% frame boost or you know fps boost and i could not on re like could not really notice a, a you know a, a, a visual a dip in visuals like i it just wasn't there like i thought it would be and so that leads me to believe that i want to test dlss more see if it's really gotten better with dlss 2.0 because it, it, especially in a game like fortnite at a higher resolution if, if you can get a little bit more performance it's kind of like running a two gpu solution with only one graphics card right but it's more so like a virtual uh, it's almost like a virtual graphics card right getting that extra performance 
And RTX One says, I'll let you try and change my mind on DLSS. Yuck. No thanks. And respectively, I understand I was that same way with DLSS. Pro matter of fact, last week's live stream and even in last week's vlog, I remember saying that I I couldn't stand DLSS. To, like, I prefer the native resolution. Like, I am 100% with you on that. And while to maintain my integrity, I don't want to recommend something I wouldn't do myself. But there could be some scenarios where it could be plausible to um you know to enable dlss if you're playing a competitive game or you're struggling at your resolution but trust me i won't i don't i don't want to try to change anybody's mind just maybe show some advantages you know if if you're running a a uh, ampere or turing card and you're able to take advantage of dlss drinky crow says i've been watching your show now for like two months ish live chat is great yeah, thanks. Uh, we're we're still in our 10, 10 live stream video experiment, if you will. So I just started doing live streams. Yeah, about two months ago, and I am experimenting with the format, the time, um, just the overall structure on you know maintaining engagement and just making it fun, interactive, helpful, and informative for you ladies and gents here in the audience but i do appreciate you hanging around and being a you know being a subscriber here on the channel drinky crow and and everybody else rtx on another subscriber and spart i am butchering names left and right today spar tourless 1993 i know i said that wrong i know i said i'm just gonna go ahead and, and eight mile myself if you got that reference let me know in the chat but i'm just gonna eight mile myself here because i know i butchered that and Spart says, Spart from abbreviate. Spart Spart 93 says, I'm building my first gaming PC. I have some questions. What I should go with? This is what I have so far. Okay. I know you won't be able to share a link in the chat, Spart 93, but tell us, you know, some of the base core system specifications you've gone with. And some of us here in the chat and myself maybe can give you some give you some helpful feedback on you know what you've configured so far rtx on says control looked terrible with dlss nobody is going to change my mind on that but that entire game looked washed out okay i can i can respect that i mean dlss when i first tried it i thought it looked horrible and i only just recently revisited it here with dlss 2.0 with the recent driver update and I just didn't notice it was as fuzzy, at least in Fort in Fortnite. And I was playing at 4K, but at least in Fortnite, I, it just it wasn't as bad as it first was when I first tried DLSS. And RTX, I say I I resonate with you because that first time I tried it was the last time I tried it. Like I never went back to it until here recently, about a couple weeks ago. I just went back to it, um, and I haven't I haven't played Control, so I can't speak on that. But I'll take your word for it. Although I, my understanding is Control really did really did well with their uh, you know let us know how the how the real time lighting was in Control and I'm not sure if Control used global illumination, but if they did, let us know. And RTX one says yeah they're using software tricks to hit markers their GPU can't question mark instead of giving the horsepower. Give tricks like PC gamers dogged on checkerboard and rendering. Now we're praising DLS. I'll try not to rant. It's I mean it's all good. Rant rant brother. I was against, you know, AI being used to, to do this as well, but you know the, it, it could be what the future of graphics cards are leaning towards, you know, if just using AI and just a virtual AI to boost to boost performance i'm not i'm not for checkerboard and though i laughed at the ps4 at pro their 4k was checkerboarding now nah, checkerboarding is a whole different different rant different video but when i found that out about the ps4 pro i'm like how are they marketing this as a 4k you know gaming console it's not 4k it's not native i prefer native resolutions though the facts dlss aside i still prefer the native resolution and RTX one say I try to keep an open mind. You know, hey, most most sensible people will. 
you know, keep an open mind, but, you know, stick, stand by your morals and stand by your values. Um, DLSS isn't for everybody, but it is a feature on your graphics card that if you wanted to take advantage of, it's something you could just switch on and, and maybe see a 25%, you know, boost in performance. It could also depend on the game, too. I want to know, how, I'm interested to see how DLSS looks on uh, Cyberpunk 2077. And the Mr. Zombified says bad H HDR, it's high dynamic range, makes things look washed out too. Yeah, I tried high dynamic range when I played R Resident Evil 7, and I immediately turned that off too. And then the 4K uh, panel I was using at the time supported HDR, and when I switched it on, it just, I just didn't see the benefit. I'm like, uh, it's, I, it's, I'm not getting the effect I wanted. And so, yeah, HDR technology is a perfect example. I just don't. I, I don't, I, it's not something I'm interested in. Just really isn't. And RTX only says, I guess even NVIDIA said the limits of rasterization are here. Yeah, I think they said that with the 20 series because we really didn't see a significant jump in, in just pure rasterization between Pascal and Turing. The 1080 Ti was still very much, at the time, a good graphics card, but it just didn't have ray tracing. Yeah, they came out with a later and supported ray tracing on Pascal, but it's a complete joke. Okay, ray tracing on the Pascal car. It's a complete joke. But in terms of rasterization, the 1080 Ti was still very much a, a decent GPU solution. The 2080 was if you wanted ray tracing at, a, you know, an RTX, it was slightly faster, but not, didn't necessarily make the 1080 Ti obsolete. It made, it, it made 1080 Ti's a good buy. I sold mine at the time to a local to a friend of mine for a really good deal. It's like four hundred and fifty dollars. I sold a EVGA 1080 Ti, and then I ended up selling another 1080 Ti to him, an Asus ROG Strix 1080 Ti for about five hundred dollars. Still very much. I mean, it's the fast graphics card still very much has 11 gigabytes of VRAM. It just you know didn't have any real support, no Tensor cores or RT cores to uh, really take full advantage of ray tracing but yeah the limits and this is why and like you said rtx1 this is why we're seeing you know gimmicks like ai do things that dlss can do because nvidia has maybe reached until they you know switch to start using tsmc 7 uh tsmc maybe we'll get better gains but yeah yeah, ray tracing. I mean, a lot of a lot of other tech tubers kind of at the time too. I don't think I had just started this channel yet, but other tech tubers at the time was making mention that as well. That you know, with with AI here doing things like what DLSS is doing, really ray tracing and things like that are the future of making games say more immersive. I appreciated ray tracing and Metro Exodus. I talk about that faithfully here during live streams and some of the vlogs. I appreciated ray tracing and Metro Exodus. I really did. It really changed the how I played the game in certain maps, in certain areas. And Drinky Crow says, I'm still playing old games online, War, Thunder, Dark, Ages of Camelot. So I'll be looking to upgrade games also. Yeah. You know, on a, with your with the 6300, with your FX 6300, your 6 core. I imagine maybe too it doesn't have some of the newer instruction sets you may need to run some of the modern games, and uh, switching from a three gig you know switching from three gigabytes to uh, you figure even on the 2060 if you could pick up a 2060 for under 249 dollars that'd be like a 45 to 50 percent you know performance boost in just that department alone, so something to consider. And RTX one says yeah they got to play Exodus. I mean Exodus was. Exodus was great. I liked Exodus, and I didn't want it to end. No, it's not really open world, but the way they do their open world makes you feel like you're in a big area doing small tasks, if that makes sense. But the game was just really good. It's one of the best implementations of global illumination ray tracing, with the exception of Fortnite, which I haven't tested, which Fortnite isn't known for its graphic fidelity, but I haven't tested Fortnite. But Metro Exodus, in my honest opinion, did ray tracing really, really well. Like, uh, man, it was just really, really immersive. It really was. But, and on the subject, you know, 
to, to jump into our third content block of the show in the live stream. And I know we ran over, but this is all good times. And, you know, if it's okay, if it's okay with you guys and girls, I don't, you know, we'll keep going. We'll keep the show going. But uh, just to jump into the next content block, which is all good questions. I appreciate everybody, you know, adding value and adding content in the chat and sharing their experiences and their specs. Which, speaking of, I see Spart93 has hit us with their specs. Fantex Evolved, great case, right? Oh, I love that case. 3700X, 8-core, 16-thread, Zen 2 CPU, okay. B550 board, nice. 16 gigabytes, 3600 uh, megahertz CL, um, CL16 RAM. Good, you went, I mean, just like the build we built today, um, you went with, you know, the sweet spot RAM for that CPU. Good stuff, good stuff. And an RTX... And the RTX 3070. Okay, so this is, I'm sorry, I stay corrected. This is a future build coming up. 500 gigabyte and one terabyte NVMe SSD. 650 watt power supply with a three pack Cooler Master fans. Oh, and a Cooler Master Air, he's saying. Okay, I mean, that's, what resolution do you play at? Is this for 1080p high refresh rate, competitive games? You know, is this like for 240 hertz? 120 hertz or 144 hertz competitive game and is this for an overall well-rounded system or are you looking to game at a higher resolution i think it's a great starting point i would maybe if you if it, if you can and it's in your budget to go with a 750 watt power supply i don't know what the tdp for the 3070 is going to be but it's what a, it's what Nvidia recommends for even the 3080 and the 3090, just to give yourself you know adequate headroom. If you can bump up to like an 80 plus gold rated power supply, much like if we jump back here to the into our list here, much like this EVGA power supply we picked out, and it's fully modular. So again, it's going to you know help help re, help reduce clutter, help improve promote healthy airflow. Eliminate any unnecessary cores you may need, and it's 80 plus gold certified. So you're going to get really decent efficiency on a 12 volt rail. Also, 1080. So Spart says, Spart 93 says 1080p gaming and some streaming. So yeah, this this system, um, this system should serve you well for that. Consider upping from 16 gigabytes of RAM to 32 gigabytes of RAM, similar to what we did here for our system today. It's 16 now, but earlier, because this put the build about $60 less, but that's because earlier we had a 32 gigabyte kit of G-Skill Ripjaw series right here. Oh, well, that's 3200 megahertz. Uh, let's find it right here. Consider going with 32 gigabytes streaming is demanding on system memory and uh even when i was testing streaming out here on snow white which i have 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz cl16 ram i was up in ram usage somewhere like 12 gigabytes 12 to 13 gigabytes depending on the game when i was streaming which you figure the the game doesn't have as much ram as it probably needs to uh to help communicate between the CPU and GPU and render those frames. So consider going with a 16 gigabyte kit because you want to stream, you can do it with 16, but if you can say bump up that, you know, if you can include that into your budget, it's going to help with your stream altogether. It's going to help you maintain competitive, help maintain a competitive angle. All right. And are you going to, do you plan on streaming on your CPU or are you going to stream on your GPU? I'm actually very curious. You know, I, it's hard for me to make a recommendation on that. I recommend you do what's best for your stream and for the game you play. I personally, because I, I game at a higher resolution, I still only, my output is still 1080p, but uh, I stream on my CPU. And Spart says, should I go with X570? And wait for 5000 series GP CPU. Well, Spart 93, that's kind of what we talked about in this live stream. And that is, should you wait or should you buy now? Well, I'm going to tell you that any upgrade path conscience, a budget conscience price range, and also still opening yourself up for this future upgrade path. 
if you do want to save up and say upgrade from your 3700X. Let's say you go with the 3700X now. Don't wait. What are you waiting for? You buy what you can now. There's always going to be something something new coming out. So, you know, spend what you can now. Hold on to your savings. Take that $149 savings, and if you can, you know, look at, say, an RTX 3080 if they become in stock. If you, you know, if you can afford to if you can afford to add that to your budget to whatever your savings or you know with a higher single solution storage unit like a two terabyte nvme ssd or you can also put that savings towards excuse me getting a higher rated power supply unit those those things would be much better for your initial investment for your system spark 93 even if you did go with the x570 chipset you could still very much go with the Zen 2 CPU and upgrade much later, you know, because they won't be irrelevant. They'll still hold their relevancy going forward, even with Ryzen 5000. But good question. I hope that answered your question. Keep them coming to Spark 93. If not, Drinky Crow says, I run an EVGA 650 G2. Great power supply. Like five years, but plug in wire. I think I'll be saving. I'm still new to this stuff. I mean, hey, I'm still new to it, too. I'm still learning every day. I'm learning. I'm toying. I'm overclocking. I'm risking, you know, damaging parts or damaging components and just buying computer parts, you know, laying around. I mean, but, you know, you, I'm still learning. And with PC, because the new parts are always coming out, it's like you should always be learning, always be learning about these new technologies and how you can get the most out of your system. RTX says, I've had good luck with my Corsair RM7550X PSU, and that they'll be right back. Yeah, I uh, I recommend Corsair's RM series uh, PSUs as well. I've used two of them here through the lab, and as you'll see in an upcoming video we're doing next week, that you know that the that CPU can run high end hard high slightly mid middle to midware hardware. With the GPU we're going to go with, but it does have eight gigabytes. You may or may not have seen it on the channel, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Spark says, "Yeah, you're right." I mean, yeah, I mean, dude, really can you know really think about where you can put those savings if you buy now, upgrade later, right? Because we don't know how Intel 11th Gen Rocket Lake is going to pair in terms of cost, price to performance. It still is going to, in IPC, it still is going to be on the 14 nanometer, however many pluses, right? I believe it's like 10 or 12, but it's still going to be on the 14 nanometer process, 14 nanometer process or node. But Intel, on their quest of refinement, <laughs> which sounds like a pretty cool title, right? I think we'll, I think we'll rock with that when we drop that video, right? Intel's quest for, quest of refinement, because they're refining 14 nanometer to the point to where the 10 nanometer gives them lower gains doesn't give them higher it's giving them lower gains but uh, we don't know with uh, what 11th gen rocket league is going to look like but in terms of a chipset upgrade for myself from a z390 motherboard which is it's high end i talked about this on a couple of the previous live streams this motherboard's over 349 dollars so it definitely has more life left into it, and the really only upgrade for myself on this chipset is the 8-core 16-thread 9900K, which is now $300, and in terms of gaming, slightly faster than a 3700X and a 3800X. In terms of content creation, I'd say with their margin, at the time, at the time, like the 2700X was the better option because the 9900K cost so much more you know what you got just didn't may or may not have you know uh, may or may not have made the uh, the cost difference worth it. And Drinky Crow says, I think I have 3.0 Thermaltake lit cooler with two fans on rad, no leaks. Yeah, definitely hoping and you know hoping and fingers crossing that nobody gets any leaks on their AIO. That's heartbreaking to me if I would come in and, you know, I saw clear clear liquid or, you know, coolant, green coolant on top of my GPU. Any form of water shouldn't be in your computer. 
Um, I normally put my systems to sleep, and you know, your, your computer parts can get wet if there if no power is running through them, um, and you let them dry out like extensively. I'm talking like more than a day too. Heck, to be sure, right? If your if your system if your parts get wet while they're on, but if your if your AIO leaks while your system you know, is, is running, then it, it could be disastrous for you. <laughs> you may be looking at a forced upgrade. And Spartan 93 says, I just can't wait to build. It's going to be Star Wars theme, and I have a custom front plate for my mods, from Mod by Mods. That's awesome. And Spartan 93, if you're not, follow me on Twitter, at Inside the Lab, YT, so you can uh, share some pictures with us. I'm a casual Star Wars fan. On a side note, and then we'll, you know, we'll wrap up. But I'm a, I'm a casual Star Wars fan. I, uh, I do like seeing Star Wars custom themes, especially some of like some white based themes that are like Stormtrooper has like a Stormtrooper custom layout, or even Brian over at Tech Yes City's uh, Darth Jar Jar build, which is pretty dope. Um, and I've been wanting to do a Star Wars build myself. I and something a little mod heavy. But yeah, follow me on Twitter so you can share that with us. Right, and I would love to, you know, I'd love to take a look at how that how that process is going. And um, Drinky Crow says, save it for new build. I'm sh I'm sure you mean save save what's that? Say, what are we saving for the new build? Your thermal take. Oh, imagine. I'm sorry. Your thermal take. Uh, AIO. I love AIOs. I do. I have an inner max. Intermax T a Thread Ripper um, AIO I bought off the used market super super good deal I can't remember but it, it was under a hundred bucks I paid for it I think 110 was shipping it's a 360 millimeter AIO the Intermax their you know version two AIO and I got it because when I do upgrade I have a Thread Ripper system downstairs which if you're new here or you and you haven't caught the uh, the series I did which is the story of OG Thread Ripper it was a three-part. It was a trilogy I did. Speaking of Star Wars, I'm a movie buff, so I have a, I have a Star Wars short on. Holy cow! I'm just <laughs> fail f in the f in the chat because I have a Star Wars short on enough. Didn't even realize it until now. But um, you know, I I am a I am a Star Wars fan, casual. But the Third Ripper series wasn't a trilogy, and um, you know, we tested out a 1920x. I bought off to use market and. I believe it was under $300, which is still really good for a 12-core, a 24-thread CPU, and I have the advantage of quad-channel memory. If you haven't seen that video, it's slightly dated, um, as we did it a little earlier in the year, but if you haven't seen that video, please definitely check that series out. It has its own playlist. You can find it on the playlist section here on my channel or down in the basement. That's the description box. You can find that playlist there. It's a three-part trilogy, where the first one is the story of OG Thread Ripper, where you know, we go over the parts and uh you know we go over the parts we go over what we're building with then we build and then the second part is more benchmark heavy um that one is a 1080p benchmark story um and again that's more that was so benchmark benchmark focused like we have twit you know we have gaming numbers and and davinci we have pc gaming benchmarks davinci resolve content creation workflows and lender workflows in that cpu it's the whole Kit and caboodle, right? So give that, and then the third one is the overclocking, um, overclocking Trevor for 1920x. Speaking of overclocking, and that video, I will say before we move on, I did that in a very different kind of structure. It's ironically, I believe it's my most disliked video on the channel, but the likes still, it still has a good, healthy like to dislike ratio by some 88% or something like that. But uh, it's it's still my it's one of the most disliked videos on my channel. The audio isn't great. I will rightfully admit it was during a time where I, I didn't quite understand audio as much as I do now, and uh, some th some things could have been a little bit more elaborated on and talked about in the video. But the structure and what you get from it, it was still very much interested, and I still get positive feedback on it. So I just think most it the the format didn't resonate with the community, but it's one of my favorite videos. 
RCX Orange for, says for sure that's one thing you don't want wet. All I'm saying, boys. Yeah, absolutely. You want to keep that, you know, keep keep that dry, especially if your graphics card doesn't have a backplate. I don't know how much it would help you, but I'm looking, you know, even as I'm looking at my RTX 2080 right here, which I know you guys can't see, but, um, you know, if the pump were to leak by the hoses, and if the pump were to start leaking, it would leak directly. Even with the backplate, there's like serrated, you know, design design slots on the back of the graphics card where coolant can still very much leak in there. And if the leak is severe, you're just you're just looking at more water hitting your system. So it is it is one of my fears. And even you know, if I'm out and about and I'm outside doing lab stuff and I come home, I just kind of check, give a quick glance of the systems we have here that do have AIOs, just to be sure. Because leaks do happen, they're rare, but leaks leaks can and do happen though. Make no mistake. And RTX says Star Wars inside the lab. What about Dungeons and Dragons? D and D, um, not so much. I mean, it's a great series. I just didn't play it enough when I was younger. I did play a little bit of World of Warcraft, but I don't have as much time as I have on my hands to play games like that that require, you know, a a full commitment to really jump in and um, you know be immersed. And, but Dungeons and Dragons has amazing lore. D and D has been around for a long time. I do like some of the artwork though from Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, I I I don't play, but I did like watching people play. Like that's a game like Dota 2. The games I notice RTX on and, and everybody really more specifically, but the games I don't like playing, I do like watching people. I know before it was like, well, why do why do gamers want to watch other gamers play games and even non-competitive based ones? But it's like games either I don't a have time to play and get into and to like learn the lore and things like that and like dungeon crawlers like Diablo, which is also an awesome game. I uh, I do I will like watching streamers play those type of games. Those are the type of games I I like watching, or I like you know, I like watching streamers stream. Um, yeah, so RTX says that's cool, man. Yeah, absolutely. I I uh, it's hard for me to to watch streamers play games I like playing, unless they're better than me. Unless it's a competitive game, and I am not the best competitive gamer. Full flipping disclosure i will always tell you this when i'm benchmarking i am not that great at most competitive games fortnite i've gotten a little better at apex i'm not that good at PUBG, i don't play enough to get good fortnite i've played a lot because we've been benchmarking a lot here and i've gotten a little better at fortnite but on competitive like warzone i'm warzone i'm pretty decent um but I, for the most part i just like to jump in and have fun and just compete and not do it for like clout or for like you know for a community just to overall just have fun and show more of my game and personality and rtx one says they absolutely yeah amazing lore and art dungeon and dragon surely does have some amazing artwork specifically like i really like some of the dnd artwork and even some of their statues too like some of the swag i would see in a gamestop i like looking at those as well and now you know what i gotta get me some here in the lab mark my words maybe not next live stream but coming up because shipping is super slow. But now I want to jump on Amazon and, and, and do some searching. Because they do have some amazing lore and artwork. That is definitely true. But um, in a nutshell, right? With, you know, building a high-end gaming PC. For those of you who are who are here. And, you know, you, you're, you're watching. And you're, and you're just kind of sitting back and observing a live stream. And, uh, you know, we want to come to some some form of conclusion and that is i highly highly recommend that you invest now and upgrade later especially for a high-end gaming pc build invest now upgrade later what do we mean by that like uh, i believe it was spart spart 93 and somebody else in the chat here today that was sharing their specs with us and even like this build here he said they want to build now. They don't want to wait. I don't blame you. When I wanted, I sure as heck didn't want to wait. I I just wanted my P. I was so done with my Xbox. I wanted to throw it. My Xbox got its karma anyway because during a thunderstorm, real real bad here in Maryland, um, it was plugged directly into the wall and the power went out and it fried the Xbox. And I was like, eh, 
it was literally collecting dust or we were only using it to watch Netflix and Hulu. Hulu and that is it. And my kids were younger, so they were using it for YouTube. But other than that, I was not playing any games on it. I generally did not care that it died. I was not upset by it. But um, I didn't want to wait. I wanted a PC at that time. I didn't care about Ryzen being on the horizon. I know the meme was real popular. Um, I know the meme was real popular to wait for Ryzen. I did not wait for Ryzen. I jumped on the used platform and built something I can just get my hands wet and just start. And that's that's what I did. Um, and that's what I highly recommend you do. You invest now and upgrade later. Be prepared to upgrade at at least a cost of one half of your initial investment to build your system. Even if you already have a monitor on deck and so your budget isn't like $1,400 worth of new monitor. Let's say you already have a 1080p monitor that you're comfortable with or, you know, you bought one off the used market or a mate you know, hand one down to you, or you came into one, however, however you came into it, let, excuse me, let's say, you know, you, you, you just need to have that initial cost of the system, in our case, that was about $1,000, a $500 upgrade path, very doable, right, even if you start with just like the CPU or GPU, start with whatever is going to give you the most out of your monitor, Right. Because in my opinion, that's so important um, to build a system that's going to be able to complement your monitor. Honestly, it's one of the things when I talk about people here locally about building a computer is I say, well, you know, what games do you play? Uh, are you interested in like graphic or, you know, or are you interested in graphics? Are you interested in, you know, how smooth the game plays and how smooth the game feels? Are you interested in high refresh rates? What is your knowledge going into this? What do you expect? Most importantly, you'd be surprised at how many people may say, well, I just want a game. 1080p, 60 hertz is more than enough. I think most people like that will grow old of the resolution and refresh rate rather quickly, and they would want to upgrade their monitor. So even then, it's still good to, to buy now, even if you can't afford the monitor you want. 1080p 60 hertz at worst maybe some screen tearing depend on the configuration you go with maybe you'll have some screen tearing to deal with but if you're interested in upgrading your monitor here soon then you know that's something to that's something to consider that's something to consider if you just want to you know build with what you can now and it's what i highly recommend if you want to build a high-end gaming pc do you build it now or do you wait i say you build it now invest Invest now, upgrade later. As I like to say, your system, your PC is, you know, everybody here in the chat that has shared their specs, RTX on and Spart 93 and, and Drinking Crow, among others, and, and everybody else I forgot to mention. Sorry, I'll scroll up, but I, I'd, I would lose my train of thought. But if, if for everybody else who's just shared their specs with us, we all have different cost systems, different platforms, different core counts, right? But we all have our systems now. We all can upgrade. We all are able to enjoy this hobby with what we have right now. I resonate with a lot of the people in the chat that came out and said, yeah, well, well why wait? What are, you, what are you going to wait for? Don't wait. Buy now. Buy now, upgrade later. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you can get comfortable with selling your used hardware, especially if you get comfortable with selling your used hardware, there's nothing wrong with investing now and upgrading later, right? Maybe this analogy is wrong. Maybe it's apples to oranges. But if you're older, you know, if you're in an older demographic and you're interested in buying a home, you get pre-approved for 300 grand. Are you not going to buy a home just because the house you want? doesn't have some of the amenities you may want or some of the accommodations you may want. Maybe it doesn't have the cabinets you want. Maybe it doesn't have the type of flooring you want. Maybe the appliances aren't what you had in mind. Does that mean you should wait until you can afford those things before you buy your house? No. You're going to buy your house and you're going to invest in your house, which houses are investment. And I say gaming computers are investments because you're investing in your experience. In my opinion, that's what it's all about, investing in your experience. How much are you willing to invest in that experience? 
initial, your initial investment. You buy your three hundred thousand dollar house, you put equity into it, you up, you, you upgrade your house. But you know, I look at it the same way with computers. Computers are an investment. You build what you can now and upgrade later. Get comfortable on the used market, friends and fam, because you can recoup a lot of that upgrade cost. You can hand down, you know, you can hand down value to somebody else coming from a fourth generation, third generation Intel, first generation Ryzen. You'd be surprised. Uh, it's a story I share, but, you know, I grew up less, you know, very less fortunate, single, single parent, single mom with three other siblings. And I didn't, I was unable to enjoy PC gaming on a personal level. I would always have to go over to a friend of mine house, which ironically is the same friend that I bought my 8700K from. And he introduced me to PC gaming via going over his house to play in PC games. So if I didn't go over to this friend's house, I would have never had the opportunity to be experienced, to experience PC gaming. Playing games like World of Warcraft and Jedi Academy and uh, Priston Tell, for those of you who may remember, um, very early on in just the days of ROMs and emulators and things like that. But uh, I would not have been able to even have any inclination of PC gaming had I not had the opportunity to experience it over a friend's house. So as I became an adult and I had, you know, I had my own income available, that's when I started, you know, experience in PC gaming and ironically I bought a PC from the same friend it was a gateway at the time and that was you know uh I forgot what was in I think it was a Celeron or an Athlon CPU and I I was playing games like The Matrix Online and Star Wars Galaxies just to name a few but it wasn't any like full mainstream games like I hadn't fully converted at the time like I am 100% PC gamer now the only console, in my opinion, that I would own is probably a Nintendo Switch. But with, like, the Microsoft Game Pass, there's no reason for me to own an Xbox. I know some people hang around the consoles because that's where their friend plays. But more and more games are becoming cross-platform uh, cross supported. So that's becoming more and more of a less mute argument to make. You are able to play your friends, play with your friends, no matter, even though you're on different platforms. But with the Microsoft Game Pass... I love it. I don't need an Xbox. I really wish my, or Sony will do something similar and develop their own PC launcher. But it's in my honest opinion, that would mean people wouldn't really have a reason to buy a PS4. Unless they bring back Blu-ray support and you want a, a dedicated blue for You know, people still do that. I haven't bought a physical disc in a long time. Movie and game, now that I think about it. And I am a collector at heart. You know, even in my... PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 days. I collected my cases. I like, you know, like most, I'm over, I'm over 30. I'm in my mid thirties. So this sentiment seems to be true across most people in my age category. But, you know, we appreciated things like our cases and we had the shelf with all our games and you would just, before you would sit down, you would line up. It's like, you know, a library, a librarian appreciating, you know, books on a shelf. With just so many to just look at and pull out, stare at the cartridge, put it back, play one, read on another one. It just I, I was a big fan of physical physical media, but I have since you know, I have since detracted from physical media and gone all digital with you know, with my forms of entertainment, both for streaming movies and for downloading games. I just don't buy discs anymore. But um, you know, PCs have Character concepts have a purpose, but a, a Nintendo Switch just seems like an overall fun console to play on. But <clears throat> excuse me, currently AMD offerings and Intel offerings they're both not obsolete, right? As, as, as jump over to the chat, I'm sorry, I missed a few comments. Um, RTX on RTX on says, might want to look into Baldur's Gate 3, guys. Yeah, I saw a few people in the chat, which or the chat, I saw a few people in the group were sharing some screenshots of Baldur's Gate 3 and just some of the updated graphics I've been seeing. And the game does look amazing. Um, I wish I had time to test it. Maybe I will make time, I'm not gonna say I find time, I'm going to make time to maybe test it, you know, test it, especially in, in, in ultra wide and quad HD resolutions. And Bart says, I'm getting burned out by COD. Have any suggestions of fun games to play? 
Uh, I mean, if if you're looking to get like a multiplayer fix, uh, I'm not the best <laughs> at multiplayer recommendations. I mean, and that's simply because I don't play a lot of multiplayer games. Um, I mean, the Black the Cold War beta, I believe, is still currently going on. You can download, you know, maybe give that a try. But uh. I, I play a lot of single player games, like a lot of single player games. And when it comes to multiplayer games for like testing, I try to keep it mainstream or I try to keep it within a realm of interest that most people would find interesting. So some of the, you know, some of your top, top competitive games, CSGO, Dota 2, Fortnite, PUBG, and what have you. But, uh, I don't know, Spark 93, do you play single player games? I personally like playing single player games because they just take so long to complete. And I just don't like The Witcher 3. I, I can clearly see myself putting a thousand hours in to that game. But I'm just not going to play it as much as when Cyberpunk 2077 comes out. Like, I really want to try that game. Drinking Crow says, I like to build a new computer with new gear for old games. Didn't need high FPS, but low power drain. Just a side build. Yeah, and so I definitely recommend you check out, you know, Ryzen. Jump on the Ryzen platform from you know fx series because of its low even zen 2 has um low power draws on their cpus but it, you can you can either also see if rdna2 which i suspect this is going to be the case i think rdna2 is going to have really good um it's going to have really good low tdp but we'll see i could be wrong that is speculation and conjecture but i think uh RDNA 2 is just going to have better power draw. It's going to be much more power efficient than Ampere. I think NVIDIA and NVIDIA knows that. RTX One says, word up, I sold my 8700K for $200 cash. Damn near the and majority of my CPU are great. Yeah, and that's that's dope. And that's what I expect. Like, I want to hold on to my 8700K because, um, I mean, I don't even know why. Now that I think about it, maybe not because I would have to buy another Z390 motherboard if I wanted to, like, test it test the 8700k although it's not you know for somebody else at 200 dollars, it's a good pickup it's a good pickup especially if you have like an i5 and a z370 motherboard and you got like an i5 8600k or something like that and you want to take advantage of hyper threading um and that i7 moniker then yeah that 200 dollars could be definitely a good upgrade so people out there could be looking for that value but if, if i sold my 8700k for 200 dollars then that 9900 upgrade path is only called only going to cost me a hundred dollars a few dollars in gas a few dollars in toll but a little over 300 dollars altogether to drive to micro center and get it and also maybe i'll keep my eye out on the used market to see if any shippers are willing to maybe flirt with the pricing of micro center you know if i if i found a used seller asking 320 including shipping i would go for it to save me the trip Hands down, but two hundred two ninety nine. That's great, man. If you sold your eighty seven hundred K for two hundred dollars, yeah. I mean that the upgrade upgrade really didn't cost you all that much. That's good stuff. Really good stuff. And Spark ninety three says they played both. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ubisoft's uh U plus game or their 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 subscription based service. It's pretty dope. It's what I use. To play games like all the Assassin Creeds and Far Cry New Dawn and even all their new Valhalla and um, Watch Dogs 3 are all I, I can't I don't think it's called Watch Dogs 3 don't give me the line but the third installment of Watch Dogs all those games are going to be available on there check out you know you you plus or you plays plus subscription service they have some pretty interesting single player games on there maybe even multiplayer like for honor if, if you if you haven't played for honor but multiplayer i mean i'm not sure i would recommend warzone if i were to play a, a multiplayer game right now it'd probably be like warzone or um fortnite right i have been meaning to test fortnite's ray tracing i test dlss like on the fly but i didn't test you know ray tracing in fortnite i don't even really know who's going to be interested in turning ray tracing on in fortnite Will it really give you a competitive edge? That remains to be seen. But it, it does have things like reflections, real-time reflections, and Fortnite also has global illumination, so it's going to have like hard shadows and real-time shadows that maybe could help you spot somebody off in the distance, but I'll test it some more. But when it comes to multiplayer games, I it's hard for me to make a recommendation. Or like RTX recommends Baldur's Gate 3. Maybe that's something to give a worth out. 
I have a guilty conscience because I like playing Fallout 76. It was not a great game at launch, but I like playing Fallout 76. I had kept my eye out on it all the way up to the point, and I knew I wasn't going to touch it until it had support for 3440 by 1440p. At launch, it didn't have support for ultra wide, and I definitely knew I wasn't going to play it with uh, with letterboxing on the sides. So I waited, waited. Then they released the update, and then I also wanted to wait until we got closer to the uh, Wastelanders DLC, which didn't make the game fun because I played it before the Wastelanders DLC, and I played it after the Wastelanders DLC. But as a Fallout fan and a single player, a single game player enthusiast, if that's a thing. Um, I like playing Fallout 76. I haven't really gotten to like 1v1 skirmishes with people, but just being in a live, just being on a live, uh, like a live world or live service based game is pretty dope. And RTX One says, awesome streak inside the lab. I'm going to grow and grab some dinner. Enjoy, enjoy the stream. Rock out on the chat. Yeah, sure. Thanks for stopping by. And, you know, that the funny thing is that, that leads me to. Where, uh, where we're getting ready to conclude here and wrap up. But RTX1, thanks for hanging out. I definitely appreciate you being here. appreciate you coming out and just commenting on the videos. I see you out there. Um, and, yeah, just I appreciate the support. Appreciate it. Really do. I really do. And so, yeah, with that said, though, it cur current AMD offerings and Intel's offerings, they're not obsolete and they're not outdated. If anything, you can pick them up less and take advantage of that new price to performance it's what almost what rtx on was saying um about selling their 8700k and upgrading to a 9900k the upgrade cost them only 100 bucks that right there is new price to performance my friends uh lab fam it's that you know the 9900k it's not the newest it's not the latest and greatest but that does not make it irrelevant it still makes it a very capable cpu that you know has uh has quality not quality um that's going to deliver solid content create that's going to deliver a solid content creation workflow with those 16 threads high turbos on all all on all eight cores and 16 threads right i believe rtx on was using a 360 or what no i'm sorry not to use an, an air cooler which yeah, it goes to show that you can you can very much still overclock on air. Just be smart about your air cooler. You can get away with a 220, a hyper, a 212, a hyper Evo if you don't want to overclock it. You just want to let it boost. But um, the 9900K is a soldered CPU, so you can't. Not that I'd recommend it, but you can't delit it. And because it's soldered, it's going to get a little more hot underneath the IHS. But uh, an air an air cooler still can get the job done. I just personally like you know water coolers and just the idea of water and AIOs and although the Threadripper CPU cooler and some of the Cooler Master air coolers I really like some of the RGB on there. So, but yeah, just with that new price of performance you can get some really really good savings. All right now. <laughs> I think this ride is slowly coming to an end. I think this I think the ride we're nearing the end. I can see everybody at you know getting ready to get on the line. Next, I just want to give a shout out to everybody who joined us in the chat. And if you're here on the replay, shout out to you for making it this long. Tell me down in the comment sections if you did. Okay, I'll award you with a virtual hug, social distancing style. But no, I want to give a shout out to everybody that came by and just provided some solid feedback and just added some solid context to the conversation. RTX on Spart 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 Oh, wow. The it's because I'm hungry. It says Sparta rules. Why did not pick up on that the first? Time? Because I'm hungry. Sparta rules. Yeah, I was saying that wrong. Sparta rules. 1993. Drinking Pro. Uh, Demetrius, that's me, Chant123, Giddy had popped in, Tricyon, Ivan, QVW, Prime, um, I think I said Mr. Zombified. Had some new viewers come in, like Bad Habit, uh, Chris, Christoph stuck up, came by. We just call him, he said he calls him Chris, so we call him Chris. Walter D for stopping by. Uh, let me see, I just want to make sure I got everybody. And I had uh, the Bug Life Gamer was here with us earlier. My uh, I had my kids, two of my sons, come in and 
and say hi on the stream. That's Thunder and Tiger Nation 87. Dr. Elo was here earlier. A couple of friends from high school, Jane Wan, John Pluto, Fully Evolved Media Group, fellow POV Society brother. It was great hanging out with you guys. I do appreciate everyone. Um, Trine says, very good. Yeah, Trine was in the house. It was good rapping with you. It was good rapping with you, Drake and Crow, who says they're off to work. Thank you for the chat. Hey, I hope you have a great day at work, right? You know, work smarter, not harder. But, I, you know, I do appreciate everyone who came on to the live stream. Thanks for hanging out with us here during the YouTube live. And uh, I hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, be easy. Thank <laughs> you.